Hi, I'm KiteCat, and welcome to another playthrough. This time, we're playing Kaori After Story by Pixelface. But without further ado, let's get started. A familiar memory plays in my mind. Oh, I'm so excited for Christmas. I just want to swim in the ocean. Aunt Yuki sighs dreamily. And bask underneath the sun. Do you think we'll see dolphins? Maybe even swim with them? Oh my gosh, that would be so amazing! Swimming with the dolphins? In winter? What are you guys talking about? Uncle Kaito grins. We're discussing where we should go for Christmas. Yuki suggested someplace warm, like Hawaii. I had missed the snow. That's because you're crazy. And Christmas is supposed to have snow. They've literally made songs about it. You ever hear someone dreaming about the sandy Christmas? Aunt Yuki jokingly begins to sing. I'm a dreaming of a beach Christmas Just like the words I wish to know Uncle Kaito joins in. Where beach boy bums go drink coconut rum And the sun-kissed girls are all aglow Nikki finishes with a flourish. I stand corrected. As fun as that sounds though, I might not be able to join you all. And Kaori asked me to spend Christmas with her family. And you'd like to go, right? Yeah. Nikki gasps and bounces slightly in excitement. She scoots closer to me. Oh, meeting her family? That's a big step! She's right, you know. You have to go. I let out a relieved breath. I was hoping you guys would say that. You sure you won't be upset if I don't join you for Christmas this year? Aunt Yuki shakes her head. I'm sure we can manage without you. And if we can't, well, I hear there are a lot of cocktails on the beach. <laughs> Plus, you have me. He gives her an affectionate squeeze. Aunt Yuki looks up at Uncle Kaito with a wide smile. She leans her head against his shoulder. Yeah. Now uninvited on this trip, but more importantly, you were just asked to meet the parents. So what's the plan? Do you know what you're gonna say? Uh. Well, what are they like? Does she have any siblings? Hopefully, she has a cool little sister. Cause obviously, everyone needs one. Nikki, slow down. Uncle Kaito puts a hand on Nikki's shoulder, and she pauses and takes a deep breath. Sorry, you're right. I'm just so excited. I mean. I remember when he was still fumbling over his words every time a girl even looked at him. That's definitely not true. Nikki shrugs, grinning. If you say so. So, do you know what her family is like? Not really. Kaori mentioned she has sisters. Nikki is about to speak, but I continue. Older sisters. But that's it. What about presents? Did you get Kaori something nice? Oh, we aren't doing that this year. 
All three of them stare blankly at me. Then Nikki laughs. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I heard you say you weren't buying your girlfriend a Christmas present. That's right. Nikki's drilling stare makes my confidence waver. Kaori and I discussed it and we both agreed no presents. And we'll make sure to write that on your tombstone. Nikki bursts out laughing. Too accurate. Uncle Kaito, help me out here. I've lived long enough to know not to argue with women. Aunt Yuki takes a pity on me. Alright, that's enough teasing. For now, where does her family live? They live far out in the countryside, I think. Uncle Kaito chuckles. Ah, yes. The freezing, terrible, snowy country. Nikki giggles. <laughs> I bet you're gonna pretend it's cold so you can cuddle up for warmth. Ah, uh, a classic tactic, complete with hand-holding and a possible here come into my coat with me. Is that what you tried, Uncle Kaito? He grins. A gentleman never tells. The three of them burst into laughter, the sound fading into my memory. I blink my eyes open as the bus finally rumbles to a stop. We're here. Fiery red hair focuses into my vision. Kaori glances over at me, then smiles when she notices I'm awake. Her eyes are bright with excitement, and even though it's been a long trip, she looks radiant. Waking up to her face is always a pleasure, and I can't help but think about how lucky and happy I am to be with her. These last couple of months together as a couple have been a dream come true. Kaori cocks her head. Is something wrong? I shake my head and smile. No. Let's go. She nods, smiling back. We gather our belongings and hop off the bus. Then we flag down a taxi. I look over at Kaori. She gazes out of the window, watching the trees fly by. The taxi takes us through the countryside. The sun is starting to dip low behind the mountains. Purple cotton candy clouds hang over the snowy plains and frozen forests. I wonder what kind of house Kaori grew up in. Would her parents like me? My stomach flutters with nerves. We finally drive up a long path, taking us up a massive hill. A decent sized Japanese style house sits on top. I pay the driver and exit the car, hauling our suitcases to the door. Kaori digs into her purse for the house key, but as soon as she finds it, the door swings open. An older woman with wavy, strawberry blonde hair stands in the doorway. She wears a sunny grin. Kaori! She throws her arm around her. So hard, Kaori coughs. Oh, I've missed you so much! She squeals, squeezing her harder. Her arms must be a vice because Kaori can't seem to squirm out of her grasp. It's so good to see you. Kaori's voice comes out pinched and tight. M mom can't breathe! Oh. She pulls away and smiles sheepish. Sorry, dear. I'm just so thrilled to see you. As she takes a step back, her gaze lands on me. She blinks, noticing me the first time. Oh, what's this? <laughs> her eyes suddenly light up. Oh, boy! That's not exactly the reaction I expected. Did Kaori not tell her about me? Hello, I'm Kite Cat. She lets out a loud squeal. Kaori finally has a boyfriend! Kaori's face turns pink. Mom! Calm down! But her mother bounces in place. Oh my goodness! I dreamed of this moment, but I never thought I'd see the day! Ah. Uh. I chuckle and wrap my arm around Kaori's shoulders. No need to dream any longer. I promise that I'm very real. Kaori turns beet red, while her mother lets out another little squeal. Oh yes you are! How fun! I hear another voice from the doorway. Did someone say boyfriend? Two beautiful girls stand in the doorway on either side of their mother. They have the same paprika colored hair as Kaori, but theirs is longer and not a curl looks out of place. 
They look identical except for the different outfits. The one on the right stares at me blankly. She cocks her head to the side. Well, this is a welcome surprise. Meanwhile, the other one turns to Kaori. I watch as a slow, devilish grin spreads across her face. Kaori? You didn't mention anything about a boy. Because it's not a big deal! The other twin is still looking at me in silent wonder. She rocks around and then pokes me gently on the arm. I can't believe it. He's actually real. Kaori frowns. Of course he's real. You two are being ridiculous. What are you talking about? We're just excited for you. And the girl turns to me and smiles. By the way, I'm Ayame. She gestures to her twin. And this is my sister Naomi. Naomi giggles. Sorry about all of this. Kaori's never mentioned a boy before, let alone brought one home. A boy? An older man, who I presume to be Kaori's dad, appears in the open doorway. Oh, hello young man. Where did you come from? Are you lost? <laughs> His voice is so sincere that I'm almost not sure what to say. Uh, no. I came here with Kaori. He blinks. Oh? Her mother beams and digs an elbow onto his side, signaling him to stop. Sweetie, this is Kaori's boyfriend. Her dad looks at me, shocked. What? Really? Kaori seems to be struggling to keep her composure. Her face is cherry red, her expression a cross between embarrassed and annoyed. Like I said, it's not a big deal! Just let us inside already! Her mother gasps. Yes, of course. What was I thinking? Come in, come in. She moves aside and gestures for us to enter. The others break apart to give us room, and I follow Kaori inside. They return to preparing the house, while Kaori's mother leads us through. It's a traditional Japanese style house, but the decor helps it feel cozy and modern. Everything is precise and neat. There's a Christmas tree off to the side, but there aren't any decorations on it yet. You have a very nice home. Her mother beams. Thank you. Where should I unpack? Oh, you can stay in Kaori's room. What? My face burns hot. Did I hear that right? Uh, are you sure about that? Her mother nods. Of course, sweetie. Make yourself at home. Kaori stiffens. What? Why are we sharing a room when we have a guest room? Her mother smiles serenely. Well, dear, you didn't tell us you were bringing a guest. So? Why does that mean he can't sleep in there? Oh, but sweetie, we just have so much stuff in there right now. And Kaori arches an eyebrow. What kind of stuff? A nervous laugh puffs out of her mother. She waves a hand. Oh, just a bunch of junk. The room is basically a storage room right now and really messy. You don't want to bring him in there. It's so embarrassing. And Kaori's eyes narrow as she looks at her mother with suspicion. I can't stop the grin from spreading across my face. Kaori and I get to share a room. The magic of Christmas has blessed me this night. I throw my arm around Kaori, shuffling her close. I, for one, think that's a great idea. Kaori stares at me. What? I whisper. Kaori, get ready for the best nights of your life. Her cheeks flush. Stop being weird! Ah, she's cute when she's flustered. Kaori's mother pushes us towards the hallway. Happy unpacking, you two. Dinner will be ready soon. Firmly dismissed, Kaori leads the way down the hall towards her room. I wonder what it'll be like. Sleek and modern? A bunch of mecha stuff everywhere. Anime posters, maybe? A moment later, she opens the door. The walls are pastel pink. There is a large bed with a plush blanket, pink sheets and matching pillows. A white dresser sits off to the sides. 
Her curtains are flowy and frily. A pile of stuffed animals sit propped up on her bed. If I didn't know any better, I'd guess this was a little girl's room. I didn't expect Kari's space to be so girly. A half smile lifts my face. Kari, you didn't tell me pink was your favorite color. What? I gestured to the room. I haven't been here in a while, okay? I resist the urge to smirk. Weren't you just here last year? Kaori freezes. Shut up! Her face burns red as I laugh. Kaori wields her suitcase over to her dresser. She unzips it and starts unpacking her belongings, stuffing her clothes into her drawers. Where should I start unpacking my stuff? Kaori nods to the closet. It's fairly empty in there since I don't stay here much anymore. Feel free to hang up some of your stuff. Okay, thanks. I haul my suitcase to the other side of the room and start hanging up my clothes. I have a few jackets, some shirts, snow pants. It never hurts to be prepared, right? I'm in the middle of finishing out an extra pair of snow boots when... Hey, are you done yet? Wait, what? I turn around. Kaori zips up her suitcase and stuffs under her bed. What? You're finished already? She raises an eyebrow. Yeah, aren't you? She glances over my shoulder and bulks. How did you shove all that in there? I stifle a laugh, but Kari notices. She narrows her eyes. What? I really shouldn't say it. If I value my life, I shouldn't say it. That's what she said. The words blurred out of my mouth. Kaori's eyes widen, and as expected, her fist collides with my arm. Stop being a pervert! Kaori glances at the clothes I already hung up in her closet, and then at the massive pile of clothes still in my suitcase. She groans and face palms. Suddenly, Kaori's mom calls for us. Her voice is a faint from the kitchen. Dinner is ready! Perfect timing. I follow Kaori into the kitchen. Our plates and drinks are already set on the table, with the rest of the family waiting for us. It looks like her mom made some kind of chicken and rice dish. As I start to dig in, I glance at Kaori's sisters again. There is something about Ayami and Naomi. I feel like I've seen them somewhere before. So... What do you guys do? Are you done with college? They not. Yeah, we've been done with school for a while. We model and design fashion. That sounds awesome. That's probably why they seem familiar. I must have recognized them from a magazine or an ad. They share identical smirks. Thank you. Why don't you tell us about yourself? What do you like to do for fun? I like to participate in gear matches. They look impressed. Oh, is that how you two met? I not. Yeah, Kaori needed a new member for her team, so I jumped in. It's been great. Naomi nuts. I see. Naomi smirks. So, what are your intentions with our little sister anyway? Kaori glares at her. Naomi? What? It's a good question. Her mother is practically bouncing in her seat. Yes, yes, it's a great question. You too? Um. Butterflies flutter in my stomach. I just really like her. My voice is so sincere that Kaori stiffens. She glances at me before turning a little pink. She's a very driven person. It's what drew me to her when we first met. W what? She glances at me in surprise and flushes crimson. She seems almost shy. I didn't know that. And Kaori's mom lets out a little squeal. Oh my goodness, what a gentleman. You two are so perfect. Kaori's dad nods. 
A hint of a smile on his lips, but he doesn't say anything. Eventually, the conversation dies down as we finish dinner. By the time I'm done, I'm feeling stuffed and happy. I bring my plate over to the sink, where Kaori's mom is already doing the dishes. Do you need some help? Oh no, sweetie, it's been a long day. I'm sure you're exhausted. I'm not. Well, thank you very much. Dinner was great. She beams. Thank you, sweetie. I'm glad you liked it. I smile and start to turn away. You do have a fun night now. A fun night? Does she mean... No. She couldn't possibly mean what it sounds like. I shake the thought out of my head and return to Kari's room. I turn the doorknob and walk straight in. To see Kari digging around in her drawer for something to change into. She freezes, blinking up at me. Sorry, I just need to grab something to change into real quick. I grab my pajamas from her closet and rush for the bathroom. That was close. After I finish changing, I make my way back into the hall and knock on Kaori's door. I'm not making that mistake again. Hey, is it okay for me to come in? Uh, one second! I hear some shuffling before she speaks. Okay, come in. When I walk in, the bedroom is bathed in dark blue shadows. Kaori dressed in some comfy looking pajamas. Her hair is down a little disheveled. She glances at me and then the bed. A blush flares up into my face. I stand awkwardly by the door. Kaori lies down and rolls over so I can see her face. Um, what are you waiting for? I grin as I settle down beside her. And Kaori's bed is surprisingly soft. I scoot closer to Kaori and wrap my arm around her. I feel her warmth as she gently snuggles against me. Mom snakes around her stomach, pulling her close. She rests her arm on top of mine, and twinning her fingers with me. Soon her breathing deepens and I can't tell she's asleep. Her presence calms me. Somehow her body seems to fit perfectly against mine, and in this moment, Everything just feels right. Comforted by the thought, I slowly drift to sleep. And the sun is bright and blinding, seeing through Kaori's windows. I groan, thinking rapidly and check the time on my cell phone. My fingers brush it and slips from my grasp plopping loudly onto the floor. I groan through my teeth. Really? Guess this means I should get up anyway. Reluctantly, I tiptoe out of bed, careful not to wake Kari. I remember from our physical education class that mornings are not her favorite. Still half asleep, I open the nearest drawer and search for some clothes. I pull out a blouse and a skirt. Wait a minute. Glancing down, I notice I'd accidentally opened one of Kari's drawers. Shoot, I better close this before she notices. I carefully fold the clothes and put them back in the drawer, when something colorful underneath the blues catches my eyes. Gently peeling back the clothes, I discover that something colorful is in wrapping paper. Anxiety curls in my gut. No way. Horror rushes over me. We promised each other no gifts. What am I going to do? I need to get Kari something for Christmas. But what? Kari snuffles in her sleep. I freeze. Don't wake up, don't wake up. She sighs and rolls over, facing the other way. I have to get out of here now. Doing my best to move as quickly and silently as possible, I throw in some clothes. Then I tiptoe out of the room and shut the door softly behind me. When I make it downstairs, I find one of Kari's sisters in the kitchen. She spots me and perks up. Good morning. Hey, morning. Okay, 
time to think of a plan. Grabbing my phone, I start searching for a nearby mall. It looks like there is one not too far from here, but I don't have my bike. Maybe I could call a taxi. Ooh, do you need to do some shopping? Whoa. I flinch, almost dropping my phone. Naomi blinks in the giggles. Had she been leaning over my shoulder the whole time? Uh, yeah. I need to grab some last minute things. Well, I'm going to the mall soon if you want to join me. You're really saving my life. Thank you. So, last minute shopping for you too? Did you forget to buy something for someone important? Anxiety twisted my stomach all over again. She must have noticed the worried look on my face because she laughs. Oh no! You didn't, did you? We promised each other no gifts. Naomi lifts a perfectly shaped eyebrow. You do realize that's not a real thing, right? Damn it, Nikki. Why did she always have to be right? Naomi giggles. Don't worry, I won't say anything to Kaori. I let out a breath of relief. Thanks. She nods. Let's get going. And she grabs a set of car keys and throws her purse over her shoulder. I slip my shoes and coat on and follow her out of the door. When we arrive at the mall, I realize I've made a terrible mistake. The, pace, the place is crawling with people. Christmas decorations light up the shops. There's a huge line of kids cutting through the center of the mall, waiting in line to see someone dressed up as Santa. Apparently we weren't the only ones who needed to get some last minute shopping in. Well, I'll see you later then. What? You don't expect me to shop for your gift right in front of you, do you? That is a very good point. She must have noticed the gear turnings in my head because she laughs again. Don't worry. When I get back, I'll make sure your gift for Kaori is good. I not. Thanks. She waves and then turns away. Now what? I glance around at the myriad of stores. Their storefronts light up with stringed lights and bold posters advertise all of their sales, luring in customers. It's all a bit overwhelming and I feel myself unconsciously dig out my phone. I could use some advice from someone who already has a girlfriend. After dialing the number, the phone only rings a few times before I hear his voice on the other end. Joseph, what's up? Sho, I need your help. Huh? Whoa, what's wrong? Kaori and I agreed not to get each other presents for Christmas, but when I woke up this morning I saw that she had already gotten me something. Sho loves. Oh man, classic no gift, but you actually got a gift. You've been bamboozled! What? That's a classic? Of course! Everyone knows that when a girl says no presents, she actually means yes presents, but in secret. Everyone seems to know except me. Uh-huh. So, what should I get her? I need ideas. Good thing you called me. Whenever I struggle with thinking of gift ideas, I always go with this tried and true present. Everyone loves it without fail. Okay, this sounds promising. And what is it? He pauses, taking a deep breath. Dongos. My temple throbs with annoyance. No. Dong. Sure. Ah. Don't you finish that thought. A lengthy pause. Finally I hear Shaw taking a deep breath. Dago! Yeah, I'm hanging up now. Shaw cracks up on the other line. Sorry Brosif, but it's always about the dongos. I sigh. Defeated. I should have known better than to ask Shaw. Really? Then what did you get Mayu? Oh, I got her a necklace. Why didn't you start with that? Of dongos. Why did I call you again? Okay, okay. Well, if dongos aren't what you're looking for, which is insane, I might add, then maybe you should get her jewelry or clothes or something. That's actually not a bad idea. I know. I'm full of those. Thanks, Shaw. No problem, Brosif. Let me know how it goes. I will. After we hang up, I feel ne newly rejuvenated. I think I saw a sign for a jewelry store when I came in here. 
I look around and then notice the sign with a giant picture of a diamond on it. I weave my way through the crowd. When I get to the store, I notice there are a few other guys in here too. Probably for the same reason I'm here. On one wall there are glittering necklaces. On the other, I see some nice looking rings behind a glass case. I wander around the store, taking it all in. The sparkles distract me and I feel completely lost among them. Behind the rings I see a case of watches. It couldn't hurt to take a look there, right? I begin to make my way over, but as I cross through the ring section, a young saleswoman approaches me. She has long black hair and a gentle smile. She gestures to the glass case. Hello sir, are you looking to get engaged? Uh... What? Marriage? My heart rate kicks up. Oh no! No! Not... not yet. I feel the blush heat my cheeks. My hands wave about in panic. I... I mean... I'm too young to get married right now. Not that I would have posed to getting married to her someday, but... The girl loves. It's okay, sir. You don't have to explain yourself. I let out a sigh of relief. That gave me more anxiety than it should have. The sales girl smiles and nods. Of course, sir. Perhaps I can interest you in a selection of our promissory rings, then. I blink. A promissory ring? What's that? Her smile broadens, clearly pleased by my interest. Oh, they're very common among young couples. If marriage is a bit too soon or the timing isn't quite right, a promissory ring is a great alternative. It's a way for couples to make a promise to each other. What that promise may be is very personal and varies among relationships, but at the core of it, a promissory ring is, well, a promise of devotion. Over here we have... As she begins to lead me away, a man's voice calls out from the back of the store. The store owner motions her to come over. Uh, be right there. Looking slightly annoyed, she politely excuses herself and turns away. That sounded interesting, but it's not exactly what I want to get Kaori for Christmas. I continue looking around when I spot Naomi coming my way. So, did you buy something yet? You're back already? That was fast. She winks. I already knew the perfect gift. Putting a hand on her hip, she looks around. This is a good place to start. What were you thinking of getting my little sister? Hmm. A necklace sounds good. Maybe a necklace. Good idea. Let's take a look. A tango necklace. Uh, okay. <laughs> None of these options really speak to me. And then I see it. The necklace of Dangos. <laughs> Shows words echo in my ear. For some reason I'm drawn to it. Maybe he was right. Yes, this is it. As I pick it up, Naomi cringes. Are you sure? I'm not. I've never been so sure about anything else. I never should have doubted my best bro. Cho definitely knows what he's talking about. Although Naomi doesn't seem convinced, he doesn't try to stop me. The saleswoman wraps the present up for me after it's paid for. Have a nice day. Thanks. Ready to go? Yeah, let's head back. We make our way back into the parking lot. The drive home is pretty smooth. Naomi tells me a bit more about what she does for a living on the way back. It's cool to learn more about her. By the time we're back, Kaori is standing in the living room. Oh, there you are! She cocks her head and crosses her arms. Where did you go? Her eyes snap to the shopping bag in my hand. My stomach drops. I can't tell her that I had to go out and buy her something. I have to get out of this somehow. Uh, well... Kaori! Kaori flinches in surprise. Huh? Naomi spreads her arms wide and throws them around her sister, squeezing her tightly. My little sister! I've missed you so much! W what 
Her face turns a slight shade of pink. Get off me! She struggles, but Naomi just latches on even tighter and giggles. Riri, you're just the cutest. I thought we agreed never to use that name again. Oh man. The embarrassing nicknames have started to appear. I hold back from grinning. And Kaori struggles and fights even harder. But Naomi whirls around so Kaori's back is facing me. She winks, motioning for me to hide the gift. I make a quick dash for Kaori's bedroom and hide her present in my suitcase. Then I run back out to the living room. When I return, Naomi is still holding Kaori as tight as a vice. Let go of me! Naomi smiles playfully, rubbing her cheek against Kaori like a snuggly kitten. Nope, I'll never ever ever glances up at me from over the top of Kaori's head. On second thought, okay. And abruptly releases her. And Kaori yelps and trips. She catches herself at the last minute, whirling to face the twin. What the heck was that? Naomi laughs and shrugs. I was just so overwhelmed with love and affection. And Kaori huffs, brushing herself off. Naomi pouts. How could you be so cold to your loving older sister? That's not it at all! Naomi pretends to snuffle. Luckily, Kaori's mom floats into the room, smiling brightly. Lunch is ready. Naomi instantly brightens up. Ooh, I'm starving. And Kaori glares at her suspiciously. <laughs> Together we head into the kitchen. Ayame and Kaori's father join us for a delicious meal. Ayame and Naomi continue to tease Kaori. They seem to enjoy sparking a rise out of her. Her mother is more focused on getting to know me, talking a million mi miles a minute. Kaori's father is more quiet, but he smiles and chimes in once in a while. After lunch, her father disappears into the garage. A few minutes later, he comes back holding a giant crate. And Kaori's mom beams. Oh, thank you for getting that, dear. He grins back, a little pink in the face. What's that for? These are the rest of the decorations. We're about to set them up. Yes, it just wouldn't be Christmas without the decorations. And Kaori nods and stands up. Start? Oh no, not you two. She giggles and waves her hands. You two can go and spend some time together. And the twin nod. Yeah, we can handle this. Oh, we don't mind helping. Sure. But the rest of the family protests. No, no, no! Her father looks at the rest of his family in surprise, then chuckles. Before we can even begin to insist, Kaori's mom and sisters have started shoving us out of the kitchen. Go be cute. What? Hey! The twins grab our coats and hats as they usher us out. Just have a sweet and romantic time. Why do you guys have to act so weird all the time? Before we can stop them, they have successfully handed us our coats and shoved us out of the front door. I grab Kaori's arm to keep her from slipping over a patch of ice on the stoop. Wait a minute! But her mother grins. Have a lovely time, you two! She winks and then slams the door. Kaori jiggles the handle, but it doesn't budge. They locked us out! She shivers, huddling closer to me, then lets out a loud sigh. Well, now what do we do? I look at the piles of snow around us and have an idea. We should make a snowman! Kaori looks thoughtfully at the snow, then nods. I haven't done that since I was a kid. It could be fun! Same. How about we practice making one on our own first? Sounds like a plan to me. We kneel in the snow next to each other and get started. Hmm. What kind of snowman should I make? A slow smirk sprawls across my face. This is going to be good. Kari notices my weird grin and Arcus and eyebrow. Uh, what's with that face? Nothing. He doesn't look convinced, but she goes back to work. I'm quicker than Kaori is. I roll up three balls and place them on top of each other. When the body spills, 
I start shaping its torso into something a little more hourglass shaped. With some beautiful big snow globes. Ah yes, the true work of art. After a few minutes, Nkari stands up. All done! She smiles and looks over to me. Kaori's face turns red. Before I have a chance to talk, she punches my arm. Ow! What was that for? What did you put on your snowman? Nothing. That right there is not nothing. So it sounds like you already know what those are. She hits me again. Ah! Stop being a pervert! Okay, let's see yours. Kaori steps to the side, revealing her snowman. It looks pretty standard, but a little more lopsided than average with weird, uneven lumps. What do you think? Uh... What? What is it supposed to be? She scowls and puts her hands on her hips. A snowman, obviously. And then what are those lumps? I point and Kari's face flushes. They're arms! Then why are they coming out of its chest? She stammers out her reply. It's a hug! Like it's got its arms open to hug you! Uh-huh. Looks like a whole lot of nothing if you ask me. She hits me once more. Not everything has to be perverted. And she pouts, crossing her arms. Maybe I shouldn't have said that all of that. How about we make a new one together? Kaori perks up. Okay. I'll make the arms. And she rolls her eyes but smiles nonetheless. We spend time rolling up giant snowballs and placing them on top of each other. Kaori and I can't agree on the type of snowman we should make, so we decide to make every variation. The sun begins to dip low in the sky as we play in the snow. I roll a little snowball and sneakily chuck it at her. It hits her coat with a splat. Kaori retaliates by throwing a huge one at me. A duck, she's barely managing to avoid it. Her laughter rings in the air as we have a snowball battle. After a short break, we get back on track and finish our collaborated snowman. It's almost as tall as us. We find some sticks to use for arms and use some rocks for the eyes and smile. To finish it off, Nkauri places her hat on its head and I wrap around my scarf around its neck. And Kaori grins and plants her hands on her hips. It's perfect. I share her grin. Yeah, it is. Suddenly we hear the click of the front door. And Kaori's mom stands in the doorway, beaming at us. Hey you two, dinner is ready. She spots a snowman and her li eyes lights up. Oh, it's magnificent. You two make such a great team. A grin spreads across my face. I cross my arms blooming with pride. Thank you. She claps her hands together, her eyes glittering. You two are already creating such beautiful things together. Her eyes sparkle with wonder. If your snowman is as handsome, just imagine. Kaori's face flushes. Mom! Oh! That seems to snap out of her daydream. Her mother lets out a slight laugh. Oh, don't mind me. Oh, why don't you two come in from the cold? We go inside, stomping the snow off our boots. We take off our jackets, instantly warmed by the nice and cozy house. Delicious aroma waved from the kitchen. I follow Kaori to the dinner table, where our family is already seated in front of modest spread of food. There is a salad, miso soup, rice and fish. A familiar, simple Japanese meal. It really does feel comfortable here like home. We sit down at the table and begin eating. The twins and their mother are talking about fashion and Kaori chimes in every now and then with her thoughts. Their father listens quietly, but I can tell it's not a topic he's very interested in. I hadn't realized how hungry I was, but I ate everything on the plate. I guess making the snowman was more work than I thought. Kaori's dad chuckles. Looks like you worked up quite an appetite out there. Please, feel free to help yourself if you'd like more. Thanks. I take him up on his offer and help myself to more food. 
We were making snowmen. He grins. And how did Kyrie's look? I hesitate. And he laughs. That sounds about right. Kyrie's talented in many ways, but she always struggled in art. Really? He nods. When she was in preschool, she drew me a picture of an elephant, and I thought she made a hand turkey. She was really upset when I couldn't guess what it was. Of course, I'm sure she's improved a lot since then. I'm reminded of her snowman and grin to myself. That might be debatable. What else did she make you? Her father shares small stories about Kaori's childhood. He seems really excited to be able to talk about his daughter. I can tell that he cares for her a lot. Once we finish up dinner, we take a moment to relax and relax and digest. And Kaori glances at her sister, pouring herself a glass of something. What's that? Naomi grins, sipping the drink. My company gifted this to me. You should try it. It's good. And Kaori glances at the label of the bottle. But it's all written in a foreign language. It looks Danish or Dutch. Seriously, it's good. Try it. Ayame drinks from her own glass and nods. Well, okay. She pours a glass and downs the liquid in one gulp. Naomi's eyes glitter mischievously. Ayame smiles, but looks a little worried. Be careful, Kaori. Don't overdo it. And Kaori lets out a breath and seems surprised. It's not that bad. He suddenly bounces with a high-pitched little hiccup. Everyone bursts out laughing. Are you sure you can handle it? And Kaori nods confidently, picking up her glass again. Whatever that is, it must be strong. I take a whiff of the bottle and feel the sting in my nose. Definitely strong. As Kaori starts drinking again, her mother pours herself a glass. Ayame turns to me. What about you? Do you want to try it? Are you kidding? I'm dying to try it. I swipe the bottle once Kaori has finished pouring herself another glass. My nose and my nose wrinkles a little at the first taste of alcohol, but it's automatically replaced by a warm, happy feeling in the pit of my stomach. All of us continue to drink and chat. Before long, I feel a warm lightness in my head, clouding over any stress or worries I might have had. I laugh as they melt away. And Kaori continues to match her sisters and drinks. Her rosy cheeks makes her face glow. She glances at me, her eyes focusing. Then she blinks. And then giggles. It's a soft bubble of laughter. And it makes me smile. What's so funny? The question just makes her giggle again. Now I'm confused. What? Your face. She struggles to speak through her laughter. It's so pink! Huh? I place my hands on my cheeks and feel the heat radiating off of it. Kaori continues to giggle, the dark flush in her face deepening. I grin and point. So is yours. The last word is cut off by a loud hiccup. <laughs> Kaori starts laughing even harder. I hiccup again. You? A hiccup bubbles out of her. She pauses, blinking in surprise. And then she bends over herself, roaring with even more laughter. It's infectious and I find myself longing, laughing along with her. And Kaori's mom glances over and unsuccessfully tries to keep her excitement at bay. Let's let these two lovebirds spend some time together. The girl's not in agreement. And her father glances at us. Amusement in his eyes. The twins pull their parents out of their chairs and steer them towards the living room. And Kaori takes another drink and then looks at me. What? She shakes her head. Nothing. But she continues to look at me. Do I have something on my face? She giggles and shakes her head again. She looks at me again and then smiles. As if she's reached a decision about something. He nods determined and drinks again. I'm not sure what's going on. She sits back in the chair, fanning herself. Is it getting hot in here? 
She starts tugging at her collar. All of this needs to come off! Yes, all clothes must be removed on this blessed day. Kaori shimmers up her sweater as I watch eagerly. She reaches for her shirt, then catches my eyes. A fox smirk slides across her face. Oh, is this getting you all hot and bothered? Guilty as charged. I reach for her, but she deftly avoids my grasp. Stop being a pervert! But instead of the usual harshness, she giggles as she says those all familiar words. And Kaori wobbles up from her chair and sits next to me. She rests her head on my shoulder and winds her arms around my neck. Oh, hello there. Hi. She giggles and looks up at me. My breath catches in my throat as I gaze at her lips. So soft and sweet, teasing me. I yearn for taste. Her face inches closer to me, until she's a breath away. As I'm about to close the gap, she pulls back. What? I blink, stunned, confused, and left hanging. Kaori giggles again, watching my expression. Valerie told me to do that. No wonder. This teasing seemed very out of character for Kaori. I prefer having Kaori over another Valerie. A shy smile spreads across her face. Really? Before I can respond, she kisses me on the lips. You are the best, floofiest, blondest boyfriend! I start laughing, even though she's squishing my face in another hug. Thanks, I think. She finally pulls away. Kaori's smile starts to fall as she lets out a loud yawn. Getting sleepy? She frowns. No, I am wide awake. I raise an eyebrow. Really? You're awake? Yes. Wide awake? Yup. Then do you care to explain why your head is on my shoulder? Kaori, who had been leaning on me, suddenly jerks back. She blinks rapidly before pinning her stare on me, squinting. Why are there like... two of you? I smile and stand up, holding my arm around her waist. Let's get to bed. She lets out another loud yawn. As we, back, as we head back to her room, we hear the others turn the TV off. They must be getting ready to go to bed soon too. As soon as Kaori hits the mattress, she rolls over and cuddles a pillow. I plop down beside her, rubbing my eyes. With a full and warm belly, I have no trouble falling into a deep sleep. I'm awake bright and early in the morning. It's Christmas! Kaori is still asleep. I decided to get ready for the day. By the time I've finished up my morning routine and gotten dressed, she's still asleep. Last night must have tuckered her out. Her red hair fans around her like a halo. She's curled to one side, her face buried in the pillow. She looks so delicate and peaceful, I almost don't want to wake her. But if I don't, we might miss the presents. Kaori. I shake her gently. It's time to wake up. She groans and rolls over, blinking through the bright sunlight. Ugh, what? It's Christmas. Time to get up. She blinks, trying to wake up, and gives me a small smile as she slowly untangles herself from the blankets. After Kaori gets ready, we pat out into the living room. And the rest of her family is already there and gathers around the tree. The two twins are on the couch next to their dads, dividing up their gifts. I'm still unable to tell them apart when they're together. Kaori's mom grins as soon as she sees us. 
throwing her arms around the two of us. Merry Christmas, you two! And Calvi smiles and pats her on the shoulder. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Her mom pulls away, beaming. Come, come! Sit by the tree so that all the fun can start. I follow Kaori and sit down on the carpet. Her dad smiles at us. Kaori, why don't you start? I think my present for you is over there somewhere. We'll open presents from youngest to oldest this year. And the excitement lights up in her eyes. Okay, sure! She sifts through the mountain of presents. Until she finds a little box with her name on it. <laughs> Ripping off the first layer of wrapping paper. She finds a small box inside, loading with tissue paper. She unravels a careful... She unravels it carefully before a small gear falls into her palm. She lets out a small gasp. Dad, is this... I take a closer look. No way! That's your gear! She clasps the mini hour close to her heart, clearly touched. Did you make this? He nods. Do you like it? I tried to make it as accurate as possible. And Kaori stands up. And she crosses over to the couch and throws her arm around him. I love it! Thank you so much! He beams and returns her hug. I'm glad, honey. She pulls away and then crosses back over to me, holding the little gear like a precious treasure. She places it carefully beside her on the carpet. One of the twins smiles brightly. Okay, my turn. He throws Kaori a small box with bright red bow. Kaori perks up. Oh, sure. I can hear a bit of excitement behind her voice, but I can tell she's trying to keep it low-key. She unties the bow and opens the box, and her eyes widen. Ayame! What? Don't you like it? And Kaori jingles a pair of fluffy, pink handcuffs. What is this? Ayame merely smiles. They're handcuffs. Obviously. I meant why would you give this to me? They're to keep you safe. And Kaori's face flares. Safe from what? Ayame lifts her shoulders in a dainty shrug. Oh, I don't know. Burglars? He glances sideways at me. Bad boys, maybe. Kaori chokes while Naomi cracks up next to her on the couch. Her father frowns a little. Kaori sighs, throwing the handcuffs back into the box. This is a ridiculous gift. I hope you know that. Naomi nods in agreement. Yeah, Ayame. That's a ridiculous gift. Kaori, open mine. It's much better. He hands Kaori a pale blue box with a big pink bow. Here, Kaori. This is for you. Thank you, Naomi. And Kaori rips apart the blue and pink wrapping paper before sh shimmering open a small box, which she immediately slams shut. Naomi! She glares at her sister. Naomi cocks her head, feigning innocence. What? Don't what me! <clears throat> and Kaori digs into the box, brandishing a bright pink roll of tape. What the heck is this? Naomi giggles. It's tape, silly. For all your home improvement needs. What kind of home improvement tape is called pleasure tape? Kaori shoves the tape in front of her sister's face. I catch the big bold pink letters from pleasure tape. Naomi smirks. Yeah, it gives you the pleasure of fixing up your house. Kaori flushes crimson. Naomi! Naomi looks at her twin. Why is she getting so riled up? Ayami shrugs. Beats me. You guys! And Kaori's mother waves her hand absentmentally. How very thoughtful! Mom! Her dad sighs. <sighs> Girls, we have a guest this year, so let's all behave ourselves. That's right. Listen to your father. The twins quiet down, still looking smug, while Kaori's mom perks up, bouncing a little on the couch. Now it's my turn. Open mine next, honey. Still looking disgruntled, and Kaori fishes out another present from the pile. She opens it up, tossing aside bright gold wrapping paper. As soon as she sees the gift, she squeaks, horrified. Mom! Oh, you sound excited! You too? And Kaori holds up a silken, lacy blindfold. Do you like it? I can't believe you'd give me something like this! 
You're my mother! Hmm? Well, there's nothing wrong with gifting your daughter a sleep mask, is there? Calorie size. This is not a sleep mask. Of course it is. So you can be sure to have a restless night. Calorie's case goes flat. Don't you mean restful? That's what I said. Calorie's father stares at the blindfold for a long moment, then lets out a sigh and shrugs. Yami and Naomi seem to be having trouble holding in their giggles, while their father sits back. I don't get why you're so embarrassed. These gifts are so practical. You have handcuffs if the burglar breaks into the house, tape to fix things, and a mask to help you sleep. Kaori raises an eyebrow. Seriously? You don't get it? What? She crosses her arms. Are you aware of what 50 shades of gear is? Yeah, of course. Realization hits me like a truck. My eyes widen and my mouth drops open. Oh! The whole family stares at me as a warm blush curls up into my face. Naomi grins. Surprise! We have a gift for you too. I match her grin and feign surprise. Oh, me? She nods. After seeing Kaori's gifts, a chill runs down my spine and a nervous laugh puffs out of me. You didn't have to do that. Really, I think I'm good. Her mother laughs. Oh honey, don't be so modest. Here. She hands me a small, neatly wrapped present. I open it up to reveal a silver watch. It's beautifully crafted. There's a built-in compass inside along with the date. Whoa, is this a Gearling watch? They're the original watches that the first gear pilots wore and have been sought out after ever since. All of the professionals want Gearlings as they are both stylish and functional and quite expensive. Whatever I was worried about did not come to fruition. And in fact, the gift they gave me actually is pretty practical. This is really cool, thank you. I feel the air thickening. I'm glad you like it, but remember. This expression turns into a serious frown. If you break up with my daughter. My whole body goes cold. Uh, what? His stare hardens and I gulp. Then he breaks into a smile, the mirth returning to his eyes. Nothing at all, young man. <clears throat> I let out the breath I had been holding. That was scary. I look around, but it doesn't seem like anyone else heard that. Did I just imagine him saying that? Kaori tucks on my sleeve, snapping me out of my thoughts. I can tell she's trying to seem casual, but there's an air of nervousness around her. Her eyes are hopeful, even though she's avoiding my stare. So, just wondering, you didn't get me anything, did you? Not like I care since we decided not to. <laughs> my mouth lifts into a smile. Of course I did. You're my girlfriend. She grins. Really? She realizes her outburst a second later, snapping her mouth shut. She scrams and looks away, trying to appear casual. I mean, that's a nice surprise. You didn't have to. I know, but I wanted to. I walk around to the back of the Christmas tree where I had hid Kaori's present. As soon as I find it, I hand it to her with a grin. Merry Christmas. Her smile broadens as she takes the present. She unravels the bow on tape and then rips apart the wrapping paper. Kaori just stares inside the box. Did you happen to call show for advice? Is it that obvious? Of course it's obvious! It's a necklace of dongos! She jingles the necklace in my face and I grin, proud of the selection. Pretty neat, isn't it? Can't be a jewelry or a snack. Besides... Thank you for the gift. You're welcome. But maybe next time you don't consult show, I'm sure whatever you could have come up with would have been great. Oh, um, okay. But are you going to wear the necklace? He just looks at me. Kari takes a moment to recompose, then shoots me a shy smile. 
I bought you a gift too. I try to act genuinely surprised. Oh, really? She pulls out a present hidden underneath the tree. I open it up, revealing a really nice leather jacket. It's black with orange and white stripes, and just like my bike back home. The cut is sleek, and even though it's leather, it feels light and sturdy. This is definitely a custom make. Kaori went out all out this year. Oh wow. And Kaori grins. I know you really like your bike, so I wanted to get you a jacket. I slip into the jacket and zip it up. It fits just right. A bright grin spreads across my face. Seriously, how did I end up with such an amazing woman? This has to be the most thoughtful gift anyone has ever gotten for me. She blushes as I throw my arms around her. I squeeze her tightly, catching a whiff of her floral shampoo. Thank you. I love it. When we pull away, Nkawi smiles bright and genuine. I can tell she's proud of herself. I'm glad you like it. We finish up opening the rest of the gifts. The twins received an assortment of fashionable clothes and jewelry. Naomi also got a new sewing kit, and Ayame received some pens and a sketchbook so she could draw out her designs. The girls had all chipped in to buy their parents an all-expensive paid vacation getaway, which they were thrilled to accept. When we thought the present exchange was over, the twins and their mom surprised Kaori with even more gifts. Ayame gave her a charm bracelet she designed herself. Well, Naomi gifted her a new set of workout clothes from her latest line of athleisure wear. And Kaori's mom gave her a new yoga mat. Afterwards, we all sat at the table and enjoyed a delicious breakfast. I still had the jacket on me while at breakfast. I could tell it made Kaori happy to see me wearing it, so I kept it on. Ayami eyed it, then seemed to remember something. Hey, I remember when you had a little leather jacket, Kaori. The pink one with the stars and the teddy bears on it. Kaori looks mortified. I, uh, don't know what you're talking about. Oh, it was so cute. I'm sure we still have a picture of it. And Kaori shakes her head. Mom, no. I'm sure of it. Oh, where did I put that album? That's really not necessary. We don't have to. Uh -huh. Her mother holds up a photo album, which was buried under a stack of books and magazines. Here it is! Oh, sweetie, come here! Let me show you just how cute our little girl was! And she gestures for me to come over. And Kari's eyes widen. Mom! No! Put that away! Her mother giggles. Oh, calm down, Kaori. Look how cute you were! And Kaori makes a move to grab the photo album, but her mother dances around her. She beams and hands it over to me. I flip it open, revealing several pictures of Kaori when she was younger. A particular picture catches my eye. Kaori had to be around 5 years old. She was in a bright pink tutu and her hair was brushed back in a bun. Wait a minute, you danced ballet? And Kaori's cheeks dust with a blush and she put her hands on her hips. So? What of it? You? Were a ballerina? Oh yes, and she was great at it. If you call accidentally high kicking the other kids <clears throat> great. That sounds more like the Kaori I know. She was only four. She grew out of that, I think. And Kaori glowers at her sister, but Ayame merely smiles back. I flip to the next page. A young Kaori with high pigtails and a frily princess dress hosts a tea party with a stuffed teddy bear and unicorn in attendance. In the next picture she hugs a porcelain doll with bouncy curls and glass eyes. Finally, I find the picture of a rock star Kaori. She wears her signature high ponytail and shows off her pink jacket with stars and teddy bears. I love. This explains her girly room. And Kaori turns pink. Ago. We go through the album a little while longer, reminiscing over old times. 
It's still crazy for me to imagine Karin being so girly in the past. I can only imagine her as a gear pilot now. After checking out Kari's photos, her mom shows me albums of the twins and all three of the sisters together. Even when they were young I could tell the twins liked to tease their little sister. I recognize Kari's put on a lot of I recognize Kari's pout in a lot of those photos. But there were even more photos of the three girls smiling and having fun. I can really tell how much her family loves each other and it warms my heart. Afterwards, we help clean up. And then we take a nap to recharge. We did get up very early to open presents. When we wake up, Kari's dad greets us. What are you two going to do for the evening? I'm not sure. Oh, if you guys want to get out of here for a while, you can borrow my car. The park is open on Christmas since they have some winter activities going on. That might be fun, right Kauri? And Kauri lights up. Oh, that's a good idea! Sounds good to me. Great, we're going to do that! Come on! We put on our jackets and hats. And then we make our way out to the car. And the park is decked out with strings of light circling the trees. And there is a small stall selling hot chocolate, tea and warm treats. What really catches my eyes is the massive skating ring set up in the center of the park. Is this what Naomi meant when she said winter activities? And Kaori leads us straight towards it. And the ice skating rings isn't too crowded. And there are a few families here with their kids and some couples around our age. Loud Christmas music blares in the background, with red and green lights flashing across the ice. I watch as a few kids zip around the rink in easy circles. Maybe now would be a good time to tell her I don't know how to ice skate. Before I have a chance to tell her, she's already at the boot renting skates. <clears throat> as we slip on our shoes, I decide to do it. So, I have a confession to make. She glances curiously at me. I don't know how to ice skate. She blinks. You don't? I shake my head. And to my surprise, she grins. Well, I guess that just means I'll have to teach you. In response, she steps onto the ice and takes off with the whoosh. Then zips across the rink in an easy glide. Her hands are clasped neatly behind her the whole time. Even when she's getting ready to break, she hisses to a stop right in front of me with a burst of ice shavings. Okay, she's pretty good. I figured it out. Obviously you were an ice skating prodigy and that's why you had to learn ballet. What? Gears on ice, staring Kaori Itami. Don't be ridiculous. But she giggles and holds out her hands. Are you ready? I nod and take hold. And then she helps me glide onto the ice. My foot slips and my heart leaps in my chest. But Kaori gri pa Kaori's grip keeps me steady. Don't worry, I've got you. My, le my legs wobble like a newborn calf. And with Kaori's gentle directions, I start to move across the ice. And Kaori quickly spins around so that she's facing me, skating backwards. Just follow me. Try not to rely on the rail. With Kaori so close, an idea pops into my mind. A smirk tucks at my mouth. I tee the forth with a loud, dramatic gasp. Oh no! And Kaori's breath catches and she lunges forth, grabbing me at the last second, then pulls me close to her. Are you alright? I grin. My arms are around her waist, while her small hands are pressed up against my chest. Her eyes are white and confused. You saved me. Kaori turns bright red. She looks down to see my arms around her. You tricked me! I laugh and steal a kiss. Her breath puffs out in a small cloud. I don't know what you mean. She playfully hits my arm. I should let you fend for yourself then. No! I slip my hands back into hers and she gives them a squeeze. Slowly, my feet wobbles less and my glides grow longer. 
I think I'm starting to get the hang of this. You're doing great! This isn't so bad. I slip my hands out of Kari's, as I dare to skate on my own. Things are going well, until my skate nicks the ice and I lose my balance. Whoa! Kari pulls me back up before I face plant. As I stabilize myself, I'm ready for her to let go, but she doesn't. Her face is buried in my back as her arms hold me in a tight hug. A smile spreads across on my face. I could get used to this. You know, I think I like ice skating a lot more now. So do I. What was that? Nothing. No, no. I, I think I heard something. And she huffs. Don't be stupid. I laugh and then slowly softens back into a smile. We circle the rink a few more times before we both in need of a break. Nkari holds my hand and leads me over to the bleachers. I sigh as soon as I sit down, stretching up my legs. This is more exhausting than I thought it would be. I'm really glad we had a moment to ourselves. It's been fun getting to know your family, but I missed having you all to myself. She seems unfazed. Oh, don't worry. We'll have a lot more time alone. You have something planned? And Kaori nuts. It was going to be a surprise, but it's fine. She sounds really happy. I booked us a little getaway at a popular winter village nearby. It's got skiing, ice sculptures, a winter market. I went once when I was really little and I loved it. And suddenly she seems bashful. I hope you will too. As long as I can see you smile, I'll be happy. No matter where we are. I gently carries her face and lean in for a kiss. She meets my lip in a tender embrace. We should probably go back and pack up our things. We leave tomorrow. Wait, pack? Are we going to be staying overnight? Yep, a couple of nights in fact. All of this is pretty sudden, but I'm pumped to spend more time with Kaori. Few days to ourselves will be awesome. Do you want to skate around the rink one more time? I can already feel the tightness in my legs. I don't want to think about how they'll feel tomorrow. Kaori noticed my face and laughs. Maybe we should just head back. That sounds like a great idea. We navigate our way back to where we rented our skates and change back into our shoes. And together, we drive back to our house. And by the time we're home, dinner is ready. I can smell the spices before I even reach the kitchen. Oh, welcome home. You're just in time. And Kaori's mom smiles and nods towards the living room. We're having dinner by the TV. So go help yourselves to a plate and come join us. The TV? He nods. It's tradition for us to watch some holiday movies on Christmas. Come join us whenever you're ready. Great. Thanks. My mouth waters at the tantalizing aromas wafting from the kitchen. I follow Kaori and each of us grape a plate. We gather our food and then make our way to join the family in the living room. And Kaori sits down and I sit next to her. What do you guys want to watch? And Kaori looks at Ayame, who smiles and looks at me. How about you choose since you're our guest? Hmm, what should we watch? Rudolph the Red Nose Gear? Rudolph is my bro. And Kaori loves. Do you feel like you relate to him? You mean, being an important member of the team? Definitely. He smiles while the twin love. Alright, sure. That's a cute one. We all settle down as the movie starts. After watching one, we're all still feeling festive and decide to watch another. We watch movies late into the night, until my eyelids are heavy. All the excitement from today has got me beat. I catch Kaori yawning too, and we all decide it's time for bed. Shutting off the TV, we go our separate ways to our rooms and get ready for bed. Once I'm in my pajamas, I snuggle next to Kaori in bed. She feels warm and delicate in my arms. I feel her snuggle closer to me in her sleep, and I easily drift off into a peaceful slumber.
and the morning sun shining through the window wakes me up. Instinctively, I roll over and feel an empty space beside me. Blinking my eyes open, I see the absence of Kaori. He must already be up. What time is it? I check the time and it's before 8am. And Kaori's not a morning person. I wonder where she could be. It doesn't seem like sleep will return to me anytime soon, so I decide to get up as well. I roll out of bed and get ready for the day. Once I've freshened up, I decide to look for Kaori. I go downstairs and check the living room and kitchen, but I don't see her there. I'm about to return upstairs when I hear a faint noise in the room down the hall. Maybe that's her? And carefully, I inch closer. Oh. Whoa. Sounds like she's enjoying herself there. The door is partly open and I'm very tempted to take a look. Gently, I creep the door open and I'm welcomed by the most magnificent sight. Kaori's back faces me and she's bent forward on her knees, her hands and knees. Her head raises high as she arcs her back, her spine curving delicately. She wears skin-tight yoga shorts with emphasize the plush shape of her behind. I could get used to this view. Oh. The floorboard creaks as I try to get a closer look. I freeze, but Kaori doesn't notice. She's wearing headphones, which block out, her, which block out other noises. Her back curves upwards in a stretch and she lets out another moan. I get the feeling I really shouldn't be watching this. And I definitely shouldn't be watching her in secret. In no reality will this end well. Do I really want to proceed? My entire life has led me to this moment. I take a deep breath. I know what must be done. I wrap my hands together as I carefully sneak closer. And she arches her back up and then down again. Her firm dury is posed as if ready for my hand. <laughs> Reaching back, I ready myself. And then... <laughs> smack. <laughs> Kaori yelps and tumbles forward. Her concentration broken. Her hand flies to her backside. And that feeling of when my hand connected with her butt moment of firm resistance I will forever cherish. And she rips off her headphones as she pushes herself to her feet. Then she whirls around and... Uh oh. Her glare stabs me with a thousand cuts. Well, we had a good run. I hope my friends will at least press F to pay respect during my funeral. She stumps up to me. How dare you! Her cheeks are flushed pink. I'm sorry. <laughs> he crosses her arms. Oh no, you don't get off the hook with just an apology. I bow a perfect 90 degrees. Please forgive me. I was too overcome by my weakness. Apology not accepted. Any last words before I end you? My life is on the line. I swallow my pride as I grovel at her feet. He seems startled. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Cut it out! This is embarrassing! Not until you forgive me. Okay, fine, whatever! Just get up already! In success. I stand back up. Kaori sighs. Why do you have to act so weird all the time? I'm not sure. Sometimes it feels like someone else makes the choices for me. So as to watch me suffer the consequences. He gives me a pointed look but doesn't say more. And then she sighs again. I'm going to finish up. <clears throat> okay. Without you here. Also okay. And when I go upstairs, I expect my breakfast to be ready. I nod. Right away. A healthy breakfast. I nod again. Of course. Okay, now out you go, before I change my mind. I quickly leave the room and shut the door behind me. I have no idea how I survived. But thank you to whoever is out there protecting me. Now I better get started on that breakfast. I head to the kitchen and prep breakfast for the two of us. And just as I finish, Nkari shows up. 
You inspect what I made before giving a nod of approval. Then she waits expectedly by the chair. In a moment, I'm by her side, pulling the chair for her. She daintily sits down as I push her in. Why, thank you. An uncharacteristic smirk is on her lips. I'm starting to have an uneasy feeling. What exactly did I get myself into? We begin eating and return to a normal rhythm of conversation. Afterwards, I offer to do the dishes, which pleases Kari, and then we return to our room. After we enter the room, Kari puts a change of clothes onto the bed. We should head out soon if you want to reach the lodge at a normal hour. It might take a little bit to check in and get settled. Sure. And we quickly pack up some clothes and necessities, and then head out. And thankfully, Nkari seems to have chosen to forget her little episode from earlier, which is good news for me. We are ready to head out the door, so we make sure to say a quick goodbye to her family first. Naomi drives us to the bus station and we arrive only a few minutes before the next bus does. The journey there is uneventful. The countryside flies by in a white and green blur. Kari's head drops to my shoulder as she falls asleep. I smile as I look at her peaceful face, making sure not to disturb her. She wakes up when we arrive, and after a short taxi ride, we reach the hotel within the lodge grounds. And check is in a breeze, and it isn't long before we're unpacking in our room. We made it! Yep. The room is modest and clean. A large king bed with crisp white sheets center the room. The bathroom has a sparkling clean tub, large enough for two. I make, I make a mental note of that. It may be useful later. And Kaori flips through the brochures she grabbed from the front desk. It looks like they list out the different activities the lodge offers. There are the usual winter sports, a nice sculpture garden, winter markets, and glass igloos which can be rented for the night. This looks interesting. Ooh, and this too. And she points to a few different things, picking checks mark as she goes. I smile and flop onto the bed. Kari seems to be enjoying herself by choosing our activities. All I care is all I care about is spending time with her, so I'm happy to let her choose. After she's planned out our entire trip, we decide to just relax in the hotel room. I decide to make use of the big jacuzzi tub and love every minute of it. We flip through the TV and watch the local channels until our stomachs growl. Neither one of us really feels like moving, so we decide to treat ourselves to room service instead. We both choose the chef's special for the night, which is freshly grilled fish. Apparently they also offer ice fishing on the grounds, so they mean it when they say fresh. As expected the food, the food is amazing and we devour it all. A white yawn escapes Kaori's mouth. Are you tired? I think I am. Really? You slept the entire ride over here. She slips onto the bed and hugs the pillow. I was awake really early this morning. It'll be good to have an early night. We've got a lot planned for tomorrow. Her eyes are closed as she talks and I grin. The poor girl really is tired. Well, at least change your clothes. Mm, okay. Mustering their energy to move, she drags herself off to bed. She quickly changes and gets ready, and then crawls right back into bed. By the time I've gotten ready too, she is fast asleep. I slip into bed next to her and cuddle her into me. In her sleep, she seeks me out, cuddling close. There is a smile on my face as I slowly drift to sleep. We wake up bright and early at the hotel and order room service for breakfast. Afterwards, we put on our hats and jacket and start our day. So, what are the plans for today? Kaori unfolds a small map she must have gotten from the front desk yesterday. The ice sculpture garden is not too far from here. Maybe we can check that out. Sounds good to me. I follow Kaori down a small path. It looks like she's leading me to some kind of winter garden. 
but I can see something shimmering from the distance. As we get closer, there seems to be some statues made of made out of glass. No, not glass. Ice. Hundreds of ice sculptures fill the area. Some are even taller than me. The sunlight filters through, causing them to shimmer like crystals. Kaori gasps. It's so cold here that her breath puffs in front of her like a dragon. This place is beautiful! I wonder if there's a competition. I'm not sure. It feels like I'm in some sort of outdoor museum. A few people trickle by, causing to look at different pausing to look at different sculptures. One of the sculptures catches my eye. It's a nice sculpture of a beautiful woman. She stands in the middle of the garden, wearing a crown made of stars. Now that I'm up close, I can see the fine details of her jewels and clothing. The sculptor was clearly talented. He somehow made it look as if, as if her dress and hair are billowing in the wind. It's so lifelike, lifelike and delicate for something so solid. Oh, hello. I look up to see an older looking man. He's wearing the same uniform as the people who work at the hotel. He must be someone who looks after this garden. He notices us checking out the sculptures and smiles. The Ice Maiden caught your eye, I see. Ice Maiden? Oh, you don't know? He gestures to the mountains surrounding us. There's a legend surrounding this place. It all starts with this Ice Maiden. They make a new sculpture of her and put her in the center of this garden every year. The Ice Maiden was the spirit of winter, and she fell in love with a poet named Sammy. Our Black Diamond Slope is named after him. He gestures to the towering mountain on the edge of the grounds. He wrote about the beauty of winter, how the ice sparkled like crystals, and the soft, powdery snow coated the world in a peaceful blanket. The Ice Maiden felt how much he loved winter, how he loved her. And she fell just as much in love with him. Kari's expression softens as she looks at the Ice Maiden. That's so romantic. He nods. Well, she came down from the skies and tried to live here on Earth with him, but that ended up causing a never-ending winter. Crops couldn't grow and people were starving. She had no choice but to return to the skies. Sammy hated being torn away from his love. And he tried to build a ladder to the heavens, but mortals aren't allowed in the heavens, and he never made it. The year he died, the world was plunged into a deep freeze as Blizzard stormed from her grief. Finally, the king of the heavens took pity on her. He placed the soul of Sammy within the mountain, whose tip touches the sky, so the two of them can be together forever. I'm glad the two of them were able to be together. And true love always finds a way. I smile at Kaori, who blushes. The man chuckles. That's right. He stretches and gives us a nod. Well, there's plenty more to see around here, so I hope you enjoy the rest of the garden. We thank him as he walks away. Let's go look at the rest of the ice sculptures. Sure. We continue our way through the rest of the garden. And we're able to see a few cool sculptures in the back. Someone carved an entire castle. I'm impressed by how each detail looks like it was painstakingly crafted. The sun rays shimmer through the towers and make it look as if it's lit from within. We pass a sculpture of a tiger with bared fangs, a massive tree with low hanging branches and even a dragon. By the time we're done, the sun is starting to sink in the sky. Kaori's cheeks are pink from the cold and her breath puffs in front of her face, but her eyes are white with wonder. That was really beautiful, wasn't it? I nod. A lot of them looked like they were magical. And which one was your favorite? The Ice Maiden. Really? And she grows defensive. Yeah, really. Why are you so surprised? You're a secret romantic. It was a nice story, okay? And she looks away, her face becoming even redder. Well, which one was your favorite? I like the Ice Maiden too. Really? Yeah. 
I like the story behind her eye sculpture. Kari grins broadly. So did I. And she glances at the darkening sky. This was fun, but we should head back now. Sure, that's what you want. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We want to make it back before it gets too dark. True. I was ready for din dinner by now anyway. We're about to head back, but Kaori leads me away from the hotel and deeper into the snowy woods. Wait, isn't the hotel room the other way? Yes, but we aren't staying there tonight. And where are we staying? He glances back at me and smiles. It's a surprise. This trip has just been surprise after surprise. I can't wait to find out what this next surprise is. It's only a short walk before we come across an icy igloo. The round dome is a series of mirrored panels reflecting sparkles of the waning sun. Snow covers the extended hall, leading up to a solid door. And Kari slips the key out of her pocket and opens the door. Following her inside, I'm greeted by a rush of warmth. And the igloo is cozy, the perfect space for two. Plush cushions rest on top of a sleek love seat, and a large bed is centered within the room. There's a dining table with two piping hot meals set up. The fragrant aroma of roasted meats, meat makes my stomach rumble. But what takes my breath away is the view. I feel like I'm standing in the middle of the snowy field. The trees sway around us, their branches waving hello. Lingering snowflakes flutter in a frenzied daze, melting as it kisses the glass. The sun barely peaks above the horizon, the last rays faintly showering the snow with golden glitter. Whoa. Kari waits for my reaction. What do you think? This view is amazing. Her grin broadens. Isn't it? The brochure said the best view is at night, where it feels like you're camping within the comfort of the dome. I can't wait. My stomach grumbles again and I glance at the table. I really hope that's for us. Yep, let's eat before it gets cold. We settle in and get cleaned up, and then we sit down to eat. By the time we're done, the moon hangs high in the sky, and Kari and I snuggle up on the couch. She rests her head on my shoulder as my arm wraps around her waist. And together we gaze at the, at the stars all around us. Tiny pinpricks of light which poke through the shroud of darkness. She pulls the fuzzy blanket over us, huddling closer to me. I wrap my other arm around her too as I listen to her breathing. Two steaming mugs of hot chocolate rest on the end tables while we wait for it to cool. Soft candlelight bathes the room in a warm glow. It's just enough light for us to see, but not enough to obstruct the view of the sky. It's beautiful. Kari nods. And thank you for bringing me here. This whole trip so far has been perfect. I catch the smile on her lips before she buries her face against me, squeezing me in a hug. I wanted to do something special. Well, you did. And you're putting me to shame as a boyfriend. Isn't it supposed to be my job to plan the romantic things? And Kari chuckles. You can plan the next one. Yes, ma'am. Honestly, I'm a bit surprised. And she looks back up at me, genuinely curious. Why? I didn't think you were into romantic stuff. She narrows her eyes and sits a bit straighter. What makes you think I'm not? I love. You just don't seem like the type who would care about that stuff. She looks like she's about to protest. It's not a bad thing. It's like how I was surprised by how girly your room looks and that you were a ballerina. If I'd known you back then, I'd never guessed you liked gears. Kari pauses and then sighs. It wasn't until I was in high school that I decided to seriously look at piloting. Really? And so what got you into it? I'd always liked it actually, even when I was dancing ballet and playing dress up. You played dress up? She glares at me. <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, I don't mind. In fact, I'm wondering if you still have any of those outfits. She narrows her eyes. I bet you want me to dress up as a cat or a nurse. I wouldn't object to those. He grins. Well, too bad. I don't have them. Aww. Anyway, even though I liked piloting in Gears, I never really pursued it because I didn't think that was something that girls were supposed to like. And I watched my sisters and my friends who all loved dresses and makeup and all of the traditional girly stuff. And I figured that's what I needed to love too. So I wore the cute dresses and I danced ballet because that's what girls are supposed to do. And did you even enjoy any of those things? Well, I... Uh, I mean, yeah. I wouldn't have done it if I hated it. And she stumbles over her answer. Refusing to make eye contact with me. Her face is as red as a tomato. I can't hold back my smile. She's just too cute. If you liked it, then why did you stop? She hesitates. I had an epiphany at the end of middle school. That timeline sounds familiar. I think back to when Kaori and Mei's friendship had been strained. That had started right around the end of middle school. When Kaori found out Ryota wasn't interested in her. Because of Ryota? She nods reluctantly. After that happened, I learned a lot of different things. And one of the things I realized was that there's no rule on what girls are supposed to do. I didn't hate all that girly stuff, but it never quite felt like it was me either. So I decided to start doing what I wanted to do and be who I wanted to be. Piloting was a lot easier to transition into than I thought it'd be. It helped me focus on myself. When I'm in Aura, there's just the battle. I think about what she says, and I understand. When I'm an eagle, I feel safe and powerful, like I can take on the world. After all, I'm literally encased in armor. I get it. I feel the same way with an eagle. He nods. I started focusing more on fitness and health, so I could be a better pilot. Ballet actually helped me increase my flexibility and gave me the foundation I needed for conditioning. It sure did. I can picture her bending over as if it were yesterday, because it was. And as I grew stronger and more confident, I became less scared to speak my mind. How could anyone know what I was thinking if I didn't just say it? It seems pointless to not just tell the truth. Her expression softens, and suddenly she seems strangely vulnerable. She wrings her hands together anxiously. But I know that a lot of times people don't like how blunt I am, or they think I'm scary. Sometimes I wonder if maybe I should have tried to be less outspoken. Her voice trails off, and she looks wistfully back up at the sky. Don't think like that. She doesn't move. Kaori. At the sound of her name, she finally returns my gaze. Her eyes search my own as she waits to hear what I have to say. Watching her second guess herself makes my heart twinge. This woman is both beautiful and smart. She's fiery yet cool. She's strong yet delicate. She's all those opposites that you never guess would go together, and that's what makes her so perfect. I love how outspoken you are. I love that you wear your heart on your sleeve. I love how much you care about your friends and family. I love that you could most definitely kick my ass. Most importantly, I love you. All of you. Kaori smiles gently at my words. She pulls me in and plants a soft kiss on my lips. That's how I feel about you too. Her words spark an electricity in my chest. Warmth blossom in my heart and I pull her in for another kiss. She giggles as she falls into me. We spend the rest of the night entangled together underneath the silvery light of the moon. Our hot chocolates are long forgotten and as cold as the frozen landscape. I never want this moment to end. Closing my eyes, I savor the feeling of blissful peace. With Kaori in my arms, I soon drift to sleep beneath the winking light of a million stars.
I jerk awake to a yelp. My heart kicks up into my throat and I sit straight up. What? What? Everything is bright and fuzzy. I squint through the ribbon of sunlight cutting through the ceiling. Kaori, what's going on? Kaori backs away from the edge of the dome and shuffles frantically next to me. Are you okay? No! What's the matter? He points to something outside of the dome. Over there! My brows furrow. I look to where she's pointing, but there is nothing but snow and evergreens. I don't see anything. Kari furiously shakes her head. It's still out there! <laughs> I guess this is our life now. You're just going to give up? We're trapped in here by some scary invisible things that I can't see. It's not invisible! It's over there! I still have no idea what she's pointing at. Time to just accept our fate. No! Come on! I'll show you! Fine. I untangle myself from Kari's arms and slip off, off the couch. I quickly put on my boots and coat, not bothering to tie my laces or zip up. Opening the door, I look around. A cool breeze snakes up the back of my neck, making me shiver. Kaori comes up behind me, staying as close as possible. There! He points at something shifting in the bushes. I squint. It's in there! She grabs onto my arm with a death grip. Frowning, I take a step closer. Something shifts in the bushes again. My heart starts hammering in my chest. Be careful, you don't know what's there. Snow flurries off the leaves and branches as the creature stirs within. Then, a fluffy bunny hops out. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I jump back startled, then do a double take. Wait a minute, it's just a rabbit! Kaori hides her face in my coat. Is it still there? Kaori, it's fine. It's only a bunny. It's sinister. That's ridiculous. I take a closer look. The rabbit looks as soft as whipped cream. Its white fur blends in with the snowy terrain. It can make out a scarlet slash across its mouth. Red bubbles and drips down its fur. Uh, a chill runs down my spine. Is, it, is that blood? It looks like it's chewing something. Is this some kind of demonic rabbit? <laughs> we can't, Bonilik. There's some, there's some evil afoot in these mountains. I quickly do the sign of the cross over my chest. Be gone, demons of the abyss! The rabbit pauses. It blinks up at me. I attempt to shoo it away with my cross hands. Be gone! <laughs> it's not a vampire! You don't know that. My pulse jumps, but I give the rabbit a closer look. I notice some bright red berries peeking in the bush behind it. I let out a sigh of relief. It's not a demonic rabbit after all. It was just eating the berries on the bush. It peeks around me again, and then cringes. I start to piece things together in my head. If she is still afraid of it, even after I showed her it wasn't dangerous. Kaori, are you just afraid of rabbits or something? I hear her suck in the breeze. So what if I am? But it's just a rabbit. What's there to be afraid of? Can't you see its teeth? Yeah. And its claws? Uh. And glowing red eyes? No. And the foam coming out of its mouth? And its horns? Do you even know what a rabbit is? She scouts, crossing her arms. Of course I do! I saw them in Bunny Dargo! Bunny Dargo? In that horror movie? She nods. My sisters were babysitting me when I was little and put it on. The rabbit was all bloody and disfigured! I had nightmares for weeks! But it's a movie. It's pretend. So? 
I don't trust them. And the rabbit scratches its, adds its ear with one of its big feet. It gives us another curious glance before darting off in the other direction. I watch it disappear across the snow. I smile a little and shake my head. Well, it's okay. It's gone now. Good. I slip my hand into hers. And we have a full day ahead of us. Without rabbits. Kari slowly nods. That's true. What fun things did you plan for us this time? I hope that by talking about something else, Kaori will forget about the rabbit. It seems to work as she perks up. Tonight is the winter market. I wonder if it's changed a lot since I was a kid. I guess we'll find out later. Maybe we can get some breakfast at the lodge and then go skiing after? Yeah, but first, you should maybe tie your boots. I glance down. Oh right, I've been in such a hurry before. And you'll probably need a little more clothes than just your PGs. Kari glances down at herself and her cheeks redden. We return to the igloo so we can get ready properly. I go through my morning routine, then slip on my coat and hat. Soon after, we head out. After breakfast we spend some time skiing on the slopes. Kari's better and faster than I am. She always manages to whisk past me, but she never strays too far, always stopping and waiting for me to catch up. While we're here, I can't help but mull over the story we heard yesterday. Some of the people who work here say that there is a broken, unfinished staircase if we check out the black diamond. I kind of want to check it out and see if it's true, but I'm not sure if I'm ready for a black diamond just yet. Plus. A lone staircase on its own is in the middle of nowhere. Sounds like a bad idea in general. By the time we've had our fill, the sun is beginning to set. We return to our hotel room to freshen up for the evening. Soon, night falls. A million amber stars shimmer in the sky above us. Our faces are chilled from the cool winter air. And Kaori huddles close to me as we make our way to the market. I can't help but grin. The spirit of the holidays is contagious here. The market is full of colored lights and people bustling around. And there are cute little stalls set up with decorations and vibrant colors. Snow clings to the roofs like little white caps. The lights shimmer across the streets and cast a beautiful glow across Kaori's face. And there are stalls selling all sorts of trinkets. Winter snow globes, ornaments and souvenirs related to the lodge. Other stalls beckon us with promises of warm treats and hot beverages. A delicious sweet smell wafts from one of the stalls. I turn my head and take a look before beaming. Oh Kaori, look! Beaver tails! What? They're delicious! I saw these when I visited Canada! Her mouth twists in horror. You actually ate a beaver's tail? No, 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 it's beaver's tail pastry. It's basically just delicious bread with sweet, yummy goodness piled on top. And Kaori still looks a little unconvinced. Well, that's better, but only marginally. It sounds so unhealthy. And that's what it makes it taste so good. I grab her by the hand and zigzag through the crowd of the stall. A man beeps at us. How can I help you today? I decide to go with the classic. Hi. Uh, one cinnamon and sugar, please. Of course. I pay for it and then, um, then the man hands me a hefty portion. I'd forgotten how big these are. The smell makes my mouth water. Enjoy. I rip off a piece with my teeth. And the sugar and cinnamon melt across my tongue. A grin blooms across my face. It's just as delicious as I remember. And Kaori gives it a curious glance. It's so good. Try it. And she forcefully shakes her head. I don't think so. You're seriously missing out. She arches an eyebrow. It doesn't look that great, to be honest. It just looks like fried dough. 
Hmm. This bread unites cultures. <laughs> this isn't just fried dough. It's what dreams are made of. It's as if your inner child became a culinary genius and created a masterpiece to unite the taste buds of the world. Gauri <laughs> looks skeptical. Not to try it as it not to try it is to snap your nose at other cultures and spread hate. Is that what you want, Kaori? I wave the pastry in her face. Just a bite and your life will be changed. She crosses her arms. Fine, if it'll get you to shut up. And she rips off a tiny piece from my pastry, chewing slowly. I hold my breath. Well? Her eyes light up. I swear, I can see stars shimmering in them. This is amazing! I grin. See? I told you! She nods, taking another bite. So fluffy! So sweet! And she turns to face the salesman, brimming with excitement. Another one of these, please! Wait a second. What was all the talk about being healthy? Her eyes widen. Oh yeah, you're right. Even though it's good, it's still really unhealthy. And she glances at the pastry in my hands, and then back at the stall. But... but it's so delicious. She quickly shakes her head. Ugh, that's so bad for you! Her face falls into a pout. But... but so yummy! And she trails off, staring longingly at the pastries. I chuckle and shake my head. I already know the answer to this problem. Before Kaori can protest, I order and pay for a pastry. Here you go. Her face flushes slightly. You didn't have to do that! I know, but I wanted to. A moment later the salesman hands us a steaming, delicious beaver tail. And Kaori lets out a satisfied sigh after biting into it. So good! I chuckle and take another bite out of mine. So good indeed. We end up spending the rest of the night browsing through the market. I buy a few souvenirs for Aunt Yuki, Uncle Kaito and Nikki. I wonder how things have been for them on their vacation. Did they have a good Christmas on the beach? I'm sure they did. After a few hours of eating our fill of snacks, drinking hot chocolate and exploring the shops, I start to feel a little tired. A tiny yawn escapes Kaori too. Maybe we should head home. We don't want to miss the last bus back. And Kaori nods. It isn't until we start heading back that I see her dig into a paper bag. It must have been from one of the shops. Here. And she hands me something wrapped in tissue paper. She's avoiding eye contact. Face flushed. Oh. What's this? She blushes even deeper. J just open it. I didn't see her buying me anything. You must have been sneaky. Quickly, I unravel the tissue paper. It's a small glass statue of a man holding a quill and paper. Is this the poet from the story? She turns away, nodding. Yeah. She shuffles another tiny statue between her hands. It looks like it's the Ice Maiden. It's not something big, okay? I just wanted to get something so we could remember this trip again. A smile warms my face. I gather her into my arms and squeeze tightly. I'll never forget this trip. Her arms encircle me too and she rests her head against my chest. Neither will I. For a moment, we stay like this, enjoying the feel of each other's company. All too soon we break away. My hand curls over the statue. I wrap it up safely and give it back to Kari for safekeeping in her bag. Are you ready to go? She nods and takes my hand. Yeah. We make our way back to the bus stop and catch the next bus out. The way back home is long and quiet. Kari ends up falling asleep to a slow song playing on the radio. Afterwards, we flag a taxi. Luckily the skies are pretty clear 
so we don't have to worry about driving home in a big snowfall. When we finally arrive, I gently shake Kaori awake, and she yawns and rubs her eyes. We trek up to the house and slip off our coats and shoes once we get inside. Everything is dark. Everyone must be asleep. Tiptoeing quietly, we reach our bedroom. As soon as we flop into the bed, sleep claims us fast and instant. The sun shines right into my eyes, waking me up. Still groggy, I blink my eyes open and look around the room. Kaori's space beside me is empty. She must already be awake. I take a look at the time and balk at how late it is in the morning. We did have a late night, night coming home and I was excited, exhausted from the travel. And Kaori must have let me sleep in, which was very considerate of her. I smile to myself, feeling lucky to have her again. The events of our gateway are still fresh in my memory. A part of me wishes we could have stayed there longer. Either way, I should get up now and see what everyone else is up to. And Kaori is probably growing impatient waiting for me. I get ready for the day and head downstairs. And Kaori is in the living room, gathering up some things but glances up when she hears me. You're finally up. Yeah. Sorry I slept so late. She shrugs. You are tired. And she picks up a gift bag and peeks within. So what are you doing? Oh, just double checking the presents. There are a few things I'd like to exchange. Or maybe just return entirely. I think I know exactly which gifts those might be. A trip to the mall would be a nice opportunity to stretch my legs and get out of the house for a bit. Would you like some company? Sure, if you want to, but you don't have to. Let's go. Her family are doing their own individual things. So I'll help myself to some food in the kitchen. After I'm finished eating and Kaori has gathered everything she wants, we drive over to the mall. Although Christmas has already passed, some of the stores are slow to remove their decoration. The lights are gone, but some of the wreath and trees remain. Most of the Christmas sale signs have all been replaced with after Christmas or New Year deals. We pause in the front of the oh-so-familiar jewelry store, which is located in the center of the mall. Why don't we meet back here in about half an hour? Oh, it's okay. I don't mind going with you to return your things. I don't really have anything I need to do here anyway. Her gaze flicks away. No! I blink at how forceful her answer is. A blush rushes to her face. I mean, no. You should just go and look around and I'll get this returned and then we can reconvene. She's being weirdly insistent she goes alone. It's not a big deal. I already have an idea on what you're returning anyway. The blush deepens as she shakes her head. She clutches the bag, closing it tightly. No you don't. It was right there when you opened the gifts from your mom and sisters. Yeah, but then later on, Naomi gave me something else. Her voice becomes smaller, and just barely a whisper. From Vicky's Confidential. My eyes widen. That's the ladies' lingerie store. <laughs> Images of lacy bras and teasing underwear fill my mind. And I imagine Kavi wearing them. I reach for the bag, but she snatches it away. Please, for the love of all that is good, do not return those. No! I have to! It's embarrassing! At least let me see what I'll be missing. She jumps back, holding the bag close to her chest. No! Stop being a pervert! I'll find you when I'm done. As she begins to walk away, my tiny sliver of hope shatters. I was so close. As Kaori slowly fades from view, I wonder which shops I should browse. Glancing up at the jewelry store, I feel drawn to enter. 
I'd noticed some good quality leather watch bands in there last time. Maybe they've got deals on those today. Plus, Kaori will meet me right outside here, so I may as well stay close. I enter the store and see the same racks of necklaces and bracelets sparkling under the lights. If I remember correctly, the watches were in the back. Making my way through, I pass by the rings and I hesitate. The promissory rings stick out to my mind, as do the events of the past week. Spending Christmas with her family, spending the night underneath the stars, the beautiful winter night market. I love spending every minute of with her, and I want to create even more memories together. My gaze falls on an elegant silver band. Maybe. Oh, hello again, sir. It's a pleasure to see you return. Glancing up, I recognize the girl as the same saleswoman from before. Uh, hi. This is a little awkward. Instinctively, I step back. She smiles warmly. You must really be serious about her. Huh? Well, you've come in here twice and both times you've looked at her rings. Ah, that's true. My eyes drawn to the silver band again. She notices my stare and smiles. It's beautiful, isn't it? Elegant yet simple. It's a popular choice within our promissory ring collection. And she takes it out from the case and offers me a chance to inspect it. The more I look at it, the more I think Kalari would like it. Perhaps you'd like to give it to a certain special someone? She winks knowingly. Let's bite. I remember Kaori's face as she cuddled into me and gazed up at the stars. She looked so content and everything seemed to just fall into place. I want to see her that happy again. I want to make her that happy however I can. I promise that I will. You know what? Yeah, I do want to buy it. The girl face splits into a white grin. Excellent choice. She carefully places the ring within a small box after my purchase. I refuse the back and slip the box into my pocket. I don't want Kari to know about this just yet. I'll have to find the right time to surprise her. As I turn to go, I spot Kari's red hair. In a moment, she reaches my side. What are you doing here? I better think of something quick. Uh, I just walked into the first store I saw. Oh, right. Well, I'm done with my exchange stuff, so if you're ready to head out... Sure. Let's go. I follow her out of the store. So, while we're here, is there anything you did want to get? Kaori looks thoughtful. Actually, the latest season of Ninja Rangers is out. Oh, nice. And you want to watch it? She nods. I've been waiting for it to come out so I could watch it all at once. I heard they're introducing a new ranger. How do you feel about that? I'm not sure yet, but it's exciting either way. Her eyes light up as she talks. And Kaori is usually so serious. Sometimes I forget she likes anime too. Well, with such a pivotal plot point, we absolutely have to watch it. We? That means you're going to watch it with me? Of course. I throw my arm around her shoulder. Who else would I watch it with? She blushes as a smile grows on her lips. I don't take offense when she shrugs out of my grasp. One day, one day I'll get her comfortable with public displays of affection. But that's not today. Mm, do you know where the store is? She glances around and then points. There's a directory. Maybe it'll show us where to find the anime store. Excuse me, did I just hear you say anime store? We turn around at the sound of the voice and see a man with bright spiky hair. He wears a cool jacket over a t-shirt and jeans. Yeah. I'm heading in that direction and can show you where it is. Oh, okay. That's really helpful of you. No problem, just follow me. He leads the way and we cautiously follow. I take Kaori's hand to mine so we don't lose each other, and we weave through the crowds. 
Soon, he turns down one of the narrow corridors. Is he going the right way? I didn't know there were shops here. And the corridor opens back up to the other end of the mall. The guy suddenly pauses with no anime store in sight. Here we are! Kaori and I look at each other in confusion. Uh, we're in the middle of nowhere. Kaori looks skeptical. Yeah, the only thing here is just a big garbage bin. His expression suddenly changes. Exactly, because anime is trash. Oh, oh my god. He shouts his last words and dashes away. <laughs> I shout after him. <laughs> Your mom's trash. Kali crosses her arms. Seriously? That was the best <laughs> you could come up with? It's not like I had a lot of time. The fire ignites in Kali's eyes and she balls her fists. Idiot! What's his problem? I don't know. It's not like we asked him for help. We could have been fine without him. Better, in fact. Well, he's gone now. So let's just find the store ourselves. Still boiling calorie nuts and takes a deep breath trying to calm herself down. Anime is not trash! Right! It's actually a really expressive and entertaining method of storytelling! Yes! With high quality production! Okay, you don't have to convince me! She pauses and then exhales. I'm sorry. He just made me so angry! Let's forget about him. She nods and we head back towards the directory. Kaori spots the name on the store list almost straight away. And we make our way there without incident. After buying the anime, we linger in the mall for a while longer, checking out some of the deals. We don't end up buying anything else, but we do find an arcade. I managed to convince Kaori to go in. And we even find a set of gear simulators. We play some co-op matches against the AI, which Kaori approves of. Once we have adjusted the, to the gear equipment, we flawlessly defeat level after level attracting a crowd. We end up finishing with a super high leaderboard score. I guess all that gear piloting at Ace and my team cohesion with Kaori over the last month have paid off. Nice work. You too, partner. We proudly exit the arena and notice the crowd is staring to die down. We decide to go back. By the time we head home, it's already beginning to get dark. And we arrive just in time for dinner. And together we share another one of Mrs. Itami's delicious meals. No wonder Kari knows so much about food. Her mother is an amazing cook. After dinner, we help clean up. And then the family splits to their respective activities. The twins return to their rooms to work on their design ideas. And Kaori's mother pulls her daughter aside. Kaori, honey, could you come with me for a minute? I want to go through some of your old belongings before you go back to university. What for? I know you help out at Uncle Miguel's daycare. And I thought it'd be nice if you donated some of your old toys and things as a late Christmas gift. And Kaori's expression softens. And a, wild and a white smile lights her face. I recognize that expression. She wears it every time she sees the kids. That's a great idea, Mom! Chatting excitedly, the two of them head upstairs, leaving just me and Kaori's dad in the living room. Glancing over, I see he's inspecting a tiny figure in. Curious, I decide to get a closer look. He's holding a miniature gear figure similar to what he gave Kaori. Although this one is only partially painted, I think I recognize the shape. Is that a model of the Series X 890? Her dad looks startled, but answers me with a pleasant grin. Yes it is. It's unfinished though. I'm surprised you could tell. They have a really distinct sleek design. A bit thinner than the general models. He nods in agreement. Yes, I've noticed that too. They can be pretty tricky to get right. I personally really like the X888. This time it's my turn to look surprised. 
I didn't realize you were so into gears. And I also really liked the number 888. Oh, well, I'm certainly no expert like you kids, but I've slowly been getting into it. He straightens up and gestures for me to follow him into the garage. It's been refurbished into a workspace. On one cabinet a lines of finished miniature gears. I gravitate closer to them and recognize that they are grouped by gear, make and model. Did you paint those yourself? He nods proudly. Yes, I honestly find it relaxing. How did you get into it? It was Kaori, actually. Really? Indirectly. When she started getting into her piloting, she did all this research into gears. I decided to do it along with her, so I could understand exactly what she was getting into. What kind of dangers she'd be in. What model of gear would be best. That sort of thing. I'm not. And even after she found Aura, I found myself still researching. It turns out, I think they're pretty interesting. He chuckles. Now, I'm never going to be a pilot or an engineer, but painting these little guys helps me feel a little bit closer to my daughter. That's really awesome, Mr. Itami. I can't help but smile. He cares greatly for his daughter and it's shown in the little things he does for her. Memories of working on Eagle with my dad resurface, and I fight back the lump in my throat. Kaori's really lucky to have him. He rummages through his drawers and pulls out two figurines, then passes one of them to me. Would you like to give it a try? Sure. I've been missing my own gear while out of school. It'll be nice to have a little keepsake so I can keep it with me at all the times. His grins broaden as I accept the mini gear. He sets up the panes and we both get to work. We continue to chat. Shares with me that Kari would sometimes help him paint the gears, but she was usually too impatient to be able to do it long term. Usually, he would paint and she would watch him. The aura figurine he gifted her was one he actually built as well as painted. It was the first time he built a model, which was impressive considering how great it looked. Finally, Mr. Itami's gear is finished. He looks at mine, curious. That looks great! You've obviously got talent. Is this a special gear? I not. This is my gear. Eagle. It's a beautiful looking gear. Did you custom build it? Yeah. My dad and I did. I fall silent as the lump in my throat returns. Nkari's dad softens. His voice is gentle and calming. You two did a great job. Thanks. He takes another look at me, and something in his expression is different. Although he'd always been nice and welcoming to me ever since I arrived, I feel like he finally accepts me. This time together bonded us. You make Kauri very happy, and I can understand why. You're a good young man. Hearing those words mean a lot to me. Thank you. She's a very special girl. Yes, she is. He claps my shoulder and gives me a gentle smile. Well, it's getting late. We should probably head back into the house. Miss Atami will scold me if she knew I was out here at this hour. He winks, and the two of us go back inside. I return to the bedroom and find Kaori sitting on the bed. She looks up as I enter. Good, you're back. Yeah. I was going to put on the first episode of the new Ninja Rangers. Do you want to watch? Only if that also includes snuggle time with my girl. She blushes and looks away. Don't be weird. But she pats the space right next to her. I happily sit beside her and gather her in my arms, making her giggle. As she sets up, I quickly get changed and get ready for bed. We settle in the bed together with Kaori snuggled against me and begin the first episode. As the show continues, my eyelids feel heavy and I fight to keep them open. It's not long before I fall asleep with Kaori in my arms.
I feel movement on top of me, and my eyes fly open. We're both still in bed, but Kaori is awake. Her gaze holds my own as she straddles my hips. Her red lingerie teases me from beneath her unbuttoned shirt. What? Her eyes sparkle and she wears a devilish smile. Gentle fingers trail down my chest. Her every touch lights a deep fire within me. You seem tense. What? <laughs> tense? Me? No, um, I'm just, uh, happy to see you. I feel the heat rise in my cheeks. And Kaori giggles, a coy grin on her face. Maybe you could use a massage. She lays her hands flat against my chest and slowly leans forward, pulling my gaze down to red lace and soft skin. Her back arcs delicately as my hands run across her hips. Her hair tickles my face. The smell of her shampoo is sweet and intoxicating. Her lips, full and enticing, hover above me. I lean in, but she's already pulled back. The shirt hangs off of her, strategically covering just enough to make my knee rise. The sleeve falls off of her shoulder. She shrugs the other sleeve off too, letting it pull down at her hips before discarding it. Read from her covering, I drink in the shape of curves as my hands trace her body. Her hands run up at my chest again as she leans close. Her body arches against mine, her skin gently caressing me like a whisper. A low growl escapes me as I grab her. She gasps as she falls into me, her gaze on my lips. I wonder what sort of perverted thoughts you're having right now. She wears an imp smile. She's pressed up against me, chest to chest. My heart beats so fast, I'm sure she can feel it. Her lips are just an inch away. So close. Suddenly, I'm jerked awake. Sunlight filters across my eyes, but there's no fiery red hair inside. What? Kaori? What? She glares at me sitting on the edge of the bed, much more dressed than in my imagination. You've been calling my name, but not saying anything else. It takes a moment for my brain to catch up with reality. Memories of her teasing smile begin to drift away. <laughs> no, 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 not now. I squeeze my eyes shut again and will myself to go back to sleep. Images of Kaori and the lingerie resurface. Her hands on my chest. Her hair furling over my face. Her lips. What are you doing? <laughs> I sigh and open my eyes again. Nothing. I just had a really vivid dream. She pauses. Was it about me? Oh, yeah. What was it about? I can't stop the smile from spreading on my face as I remember the dream. You were amazing. You wore the sexy red lazy underwear and you started to give me a massage and then... My voice trails off as the fire within me grows again. Kaori's eyes are wide stunned. Maybe we should do a live demonstration. Her face turns as red as her lingerie. She punches me in the arm. Ah! Stop being a pervert! I can't help what I dream. She seems flustered and quickly rises to her feet. All that means is that subconsciously you're a super big, lewd pervert. First of all, I will not necessarily disagree with that. But secondly, in my wildest fantasies, where I can literally think of anything or anyone, real or imagined, I saw you. Kaori is taken aback. Her cheeks redden and she looks away. The anger from before melts off of her face. Fine. Whatever. I don't care anymore. I I'm going to go downstairs. Come down when you're ready. And then she hurries out of her room. My heart is still pounding. And I need a moment to relax and collect myself. But that actually didn't end too badly. 
taking my time, I get ready for the day. Then go downstairs and join the family for a late breakfast. We decide to just relax and take it easy today. And Kaori's dad disappears into the garage to work more on his figurines, while her mother and sisters decide to go out. And that just leaves me and Kaori in her bedroom, alone without interruption. Reminders of the dream wriggle back into my brain, and I slide Kaori a look. Feeling my gaze on her, she glances at me. A mischievous grin spreads across my face. Kaori narrows her eyes. Don't even think about it! Instead, she pulls out her laptop again so we continue watching Ninja Rangers. Turns out, we only managed to watch one episode last night before we fell asleep. Leaning back on the bed, I stretch up my arm, leaving a space for Kaori to fill. Like a puzzle, she fits perfectly beside me and we begin watching. The more we watch, the more we become absorbed with the, new sh with the show. Kari was right. They did introduce a new character. Enchantra, the Ranger of Charm. She's a beautiful and busty character, who wears the same skin-tight uniform as the others. The ability is to pursue others to do the right thing. Kari rolls her eyes. It's annoying when a good show decides to go overboard on fan service. Besides, her power doesn't even really fit in with the others. I shrug. She's only just been introduced. Maybe she's gotten she's got a hidden ability or something we found about later on. It's unfair to judge her before she's had a chance to shine. And Kaori huffs, but reluctantly agrees. I guess that's true. We haven't really had a chance to learn much about her. But her backstory better be good! And time gets away from us as we power through episode after episode. Even with the divided introduction of the new character, the season is still good. We stop when we hear the call for dinner. I spot a large pot in the middle of the table. This looks different. We thought that since it's so cold outside, we'd have Shabu Shabu tonight. Ayame nods as she helps her mother bring out plates of raw meat and vegetables. And Kaori's father grins. What an excellent idea. Nothing quite warms the soul like some hot soup. And we gather around the pot of boiling soup, chatting happily while cooking our food. After our bellies are full, we help clean up and then rest for a bit. It's been nice having the whole family together again. Plus a bonus member, Naomi. He's practically family at this point. Kaori's mother pats my hand reassuringly. You are welcome here at any time. Thanks. Well, I was thinking it would be nice to have a family game night again. It's pretty rare that we have all of you back at once. What do you say? Ayami lights up. That's a great idea, Dad. Naomi nuts. Remember the game One Night Vampire? You kids used to love it growing up. And Kaori smiles fondly. It's been forever since I've played that. If everyone else wants to play something, then I'm happy to play too. Alright, sounds like that's settled. Ayami goes to collect the game while Kaori's dad faces me. Do you know how to play One Night Vampire? Um, a refresher would be helpful. I don't think so. How do you play? All right. We'll play a simple version with fewer roll cards. There are villagers, vampires, a rabble rouser, a burglar, and a soothsayer. The vampires are pretty self-explanatory. The rabble rouser will cause trouble by switching two cards. The burglar will exchange their card with another player and then look at that new card. And the soothsayer can either look at one person's card or look at two cards in the center. At night, each roll will be called to do an action. So just make sure you listen to the narrator on what action you should do. During the day, everyone discusses and tries to guess who the vampires are. Whoever is voted a vampire is considered staked. The villagers win if at least one vampire dies. The vampires win if they are all alive. Sounds simple enough. We set up the game and Kaori's dad shuffles the deck. And then he passes out the rolls, leaving the remaining cards in the center of the table. I peek up 
I peek at my card and my heart races. Just my luck. I'm a vampire. All right. It is now the first night. Everyone close your eyes. I close my eyes like I'm told to do. Vampires, wake up and look for your kin. I do. And so does Kaori. We glance at each other and then smile. This is perfect. It must be destiny that we are on a team together. Kaori's dad tells us to close our eyes. He cycles through the other roles and then the night faces over. Everyone open your eyes. You can now discuss. And Kaori blinks open her eyes and looks around the room. She speaks before anyone else has a chance to start. One of the vampires is Naomi. <laughs> Naomi looks at Kaori. You're obviously just randomly throwing around accusations. I bet you're the vampire. And Kaori's fate reddens. Oh no. I need to say something before she gives us away. Um. Hmm. Let's pretend we are the soothsayer. I don't know about Naomi, but Ayame is most definitely a vampire. What? How did you even reach that conclusion? I saw it. She raises her eyebrow. You're pretending to be the soothsayer, aren't you? I'm not pretending. I saw your card and you're definitely the vampire. I believe him. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Naomi loves. That's not good. Well, of course you do. He's your boyfriend. And Kaori's face reddens. So? That doesn't mean I have to agree with everything he says. Fine. Does anyone else hear this soothsayer? They all glance at each other. Wow. I got super lucky. That means the soothsayer must be in the middle pile. I just have to keep this up. I rest my case. That doesn't mean anything. In fact, it's so obvious now that you're a vampire because I'm the villager. And says the vampire. All right, it's time to wrap this up. We are holding the vote now. And Kaori, her mother, and I all point to Ayami. Naomi points to Kaori, and Ayami points to me. Mom? Why? Sorry, dear, but he's the soothsayer. The daytime round ends, and we all flip over our cards. The group is surprised at our reveal. You were both vampires? Yep. She beams at me, clearly pleased by her win. Ayami face palms. You've got to be kidding me! I switched both of your cards! I glance at her card and she was the rebel rouser. <laughs> nice try. Oh, you two were excellent together. And Kaori's mother gushes over Kaori and me. No wonder we couldn't guess. You two are just the perfect team. Mom! Kaori flushes, clearly embarrassed. Her mother just laughs. Why don't we play again? We play a few more rounds, rotating narratives and roll cards. And Kaori's dad had the best poker face of the night. No one could tell if he was bluffing or not. With lots of laughter, we continue to play long into the night. Eventually our heads grow weary and it becomes difficult to concentrate. We decide to pack it in for the night. And splitting our separate ways, we return to our bedrooms and get ready for bed. I flop onto the beds and before long, I'm fast asleep. My brain still feels a little fuzzy when I wake up the next day. I groan, stretching out across the mattress. Huh? Where did Kaori go? I rub my eyes. The sun is bright and shining in here makes making everything look brighter and pinker than normal. What time is it anyway? I lean over and grab my phone from the nightstand. It's the afternoon already? How did I manage to sleep in so late? I hear the door open. Well, I look up, and Kaori blinks in the doorway. Oh, you're finally awake. Uh, yeah. I smile and rub the back of my neck. Cheapish. I guess I was pretty tired from the game last night. She nods, and then she crosses the room for her purse. 
she throws it over her shoulder. I realize she's already got her jacket and hat on. What's the plan for today? Oh, I have to help my mom pick up some things for tonight. Okay, I'll come with you. She shakes her head. No need. We've got it covered. You can stay here and relax. Hmm. I glance around the room, wondering what I could do to amuse myself. And Kaori seems to guess my thoughts as she picks up her laptop. I have some shows on here if you want to take a look. I also have a couple of games. A game would be fun. What do you have? She fiddles with it for a moment before handing it to me. Hmm. Oh! I know! She clicks around before pulling something up. I glance at it. What's this? It's a visual novel. <laughs> the story is really good. A visual novel? That sounds fun. <laughs> I can make out some kind of opening theme song with some anime dudes. Sure, I'll check it out. Great! And she pecks me on the cheek. I'll be back soon, okay? Have fun! As she walks out of her room, I let out a sigh and flop backwards onto her bed. I guess this is what I'll be doing then. I sit up and scoot back into the pillows, starting up the game on her laptop. I squint at the title. Magical Messenger. What the heck? This is an Otome. Well, it's Kaori's game. I suppose that makes sense. I guess I'll still play it. The start to this game is weird. Apparently I'm some girl and I find a random phone. Some stranger is texting me and telling me to break into someone's apartment to return it. Why not just turn the phone into the lost and found? Okay, wow. We actually broke into a stranger's apartment. But no one is here? Oh. Now the mysterious phone is blowing up. Somehow I'm getting sucked into a messenger app. And there's a bunch of ridiculously good looking guys texting me at once and trying to figure out what I'm doing here because it's a private messaging app. Apparently these characters were part of a charity organization until the founder Raya died. The leader of this chat room, Z, was her fiancé before her ultimately death. I'm supposed to wait around for him to show up and figure out what's going on. And until then, they want me to try to organize a charity party and take over Rai's unfinished work. And along the way I get to find romance. Hmm. Who should I go for? Huh. Computer hacker 8A8. Sounds good. This guy seems cool. He's a happy-go-lucky hacker. Plus he's got a code name instead of a real name, which makes him super mysterious and whatnot. Hello, <laughs> who's this guy? It is I oh god 808. Oh. On second thought, maybe he's not as mysterious and cool as I thought. He spends half of his route writing lolala, <laughs> pranking the other characters, using weird internet slang and talking about cars and potato chips. Whenever he greets me he asks if I've eaten yet. Even though this guy has survived solely on Dr. Pepper. Man, my place is such a mess right now. Good thing I have a maid. You have a maid? Yup. Her name is Mrs. Vanderforst. At that precise moment, another person knocks onto the chat room. 808, stop chatting and get your deadlines done. Gasp, Mrs. Vanderforst, hello. Stop calling me miss, I'm a dude. Shh. You're making a scene. Go be a good housemate and clean up the crumbs off of my couch. Clean them yourself. The agency is gonna be upset if you miss your deadlines again. Agency? What agency? Uh. And stop building dumb robots. Make us something useful for once. Fire breathing doggo robot is not useless. He's best doggo. He is destructive. And eat a meal. Stop eating potato chips for dinner. Okay, go cook me something delicious, madam. I'll get things done faster if you help. I'm not a madam! Thank you for all your hard work. Wait! Bye bye. He locks off. That guy, I'm not through with you yet. Miss Fender Forest locks off as well. Well, that was interesting. The following chat day seems pretty normal. 
everything is going fine when... Hey, you look great today. Thanks. Wait a second. Hold up. I've never sent you a picture of me. So how do you know what I look like? Oh yeah, I watch you through the security cameras in Ria's apartment. What? There are cameras in here? Yeah, but it's for your safety, so it's fine. Yo, that's creepy. Lol, lol, what do you mean? You're spying on me. Nah, no, I'm just watching your every move. It's not the same thing at all. What are you talking about? That's exactly what spying is. Nah. Also, you just tied your hair up and it looks much better this way. Stop it! Finally, right when the things seem to be getting serious, 808 informs me of something urgent. So yeah, there's a bomb in your apartment. <laughs> what? Don't worry, I'll find a way to defuse it. You. Maybe. What? Also, you can't leave the apartment because it's dangerous. But you might explode, but stay put. Uh, no, I'm not staying here. What? There's a bomb in here. It could, it could explode at any second. Girl, you just have to trust me. Ah, uh, no, thanks. I tried to open the door. What of what part of stay put didn't you understand? Leaving will set off the bomb too. I guess I have no other choice. Edo and Ed ends up coming to the apartment in time to defuse the bomb. Turns out it was placed there by his evil estranged twin brother. After all of that excitement, his personality does a complete 180. Be careful. You don't want to get too close to me. But why? We don't have to talk on an app anymore. We finally have the chance to be together. I love you, but I'm just too dangerous to be at your side. Okay, I'll stay away then. <laughs> no, wait. Bye. I'm not going to convince someone to have to be with me. Besides, he's dangerous. His own brother came to my apartment and almost blew me up for crying out loud. We're better off apart. Well, that was an experience. I finish up the route and decide that's enough magical messenger for one day. Kaori still hasn't returned, so I check to see what other game she has on here. Nothing catches my eyes, until I spot Fortnite. And Kaori actually tried this? Well, so will I. I get sucked into the game and lose all track of time. Before I know it's getting dark. I hear some footsteps. The bedroom door opens and Kaori walks inside. Hey, I'm back! I set aside the laptop and smile. Oh hey, got everything taken care of? Yeah. She glances at the laptop. Did you have fun with the game? She must mean Magical Messenger. You didn't tell me it was a romance game. It's a visual novel. It was an otome. Those are visual novels. And she cocks her head. Hmm. I'm curious. Which character did you end up going for? I picked 808. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? She shakes her head. Oh, nothing. He's my second favorite character, actually. I blink, surprised. Really? She crosses her arms. Is it really that surprising? Yeah. He's the prankster. You hate pranks. Yeah, but at least he doesn't act like a man-child or a narcissist. Ah, second favorite by process of elimination. That makes much more sense. So, who was your favorite then? Demon. He's so hard-working and cool. Plus, he is a secret soft spot for animals. <laughs> My mouth curves up into a smirk. You like him because you guys are basically the same. And Kaori turns speech red. What? That's not true! Yeah, it is. No, it's not! You act too cool for main character. You act too cool for me. He sputters. What? He has a secret soft side. You have a secret soft side. 
Her face flushes. She opens her mouth to reply. Nothing comes out. He did. He. He dots on his chinchilla. You dot on your daycare kids. He's blunt and to the point. You're blunt and to the point. Okay, that's enough. I get it. He works Jehi to the bone, and you work the team to the bone. That's different. Our practicing is important for the team. I chuckle. I think I've gotten my point across now. How far did you get in the game anyway? Oh, I finished. In Kaori box. Surprised. What? How did you get so far in a matter of hours? I don't know. Whenever the notification to continue came up, I just hit yes. What? That means you actually spent money. Are you sure? I don't remember it asking for money. Was Kaori's card attached to it? Did I accidentally charge her without knowing? Oops. She grabs the laptop and quickly scrolls through it. Oh, wait. Never mind. She lets out a breath of relief. No money was actually spent this time. And this time? She blushes. Well, if it was already unlocked from before, they don't charge again, obviously. It was just a warning prompt or something. Wait. That means Kaori is the one who spent money to play the game? I don't blame you for dropping money on this. It was totally addicting. He grins. I know, right? It's so much fun. And she shuts the laptop and stands. Anyway, we should get going. I'm automatically intrigued. I cock my head. And where are we going? She grins. To my favorite spot in town. Aren't we going to spend New Year's Eve with your family? Kaori shakes her head. I thought we might enjoy ringing in the new year together. Just the two of us. And she looks down, unusually shy. A grin spreads on my face. I would like nothing more. And Kaori matches my style. Come on, I'll drive. I slip into my jacket and shoes, following her outside. And Kaori goes into the driver's seat and I get into the seat next to her. Soon we're off. I look around from the car window. It looks like we're in some kind of park. Even so, it's just as bright as the city. The trees are lit up with Christmas lights and there are some people buzzing and walking about. It takes a while for Kaori to find parking. When she does, she scrambles out of the car. I follow her. Unsure of where we're going. Her pace is a little quicker than normal. I urge myself to keep up, but she's always a few steps ahead of me. After several minutes go by, I'm really starting to feel the ache in my legs. This land is all flat, but she's going on forever. Are we there yet? No. How about now? No! Another 10 minutes go by. And finally, she halts to a stop, making me crash into her. I stumble backwards, just barely catching my footing. She turns around and smiles. We're here! I blink and look around. She's taken me to a more secluded edge of the park. Across from the river is the city. The lights from the building shimmer in beaming yellow and crimsons, casting a beautiful reflection across the river. Whoa! This is beautiful! She smiles and nods. I'm glad we finally made it! It'll be the perfect view for the fireworks! Oh, so that was the surprise? She nods. This was always my favorite spot to watch them. I'm sure it'll be great. My dad took us here when I was really little. We had gone into the town to join the crowd for the fireworks, and I got scared. You? Scared? They were right over my head, and so loud! Still can't picture it. I was like four, okay? I chaka. Anyway, my sisters didn't want to have to miss the fireworks. So my dad took all of us out here. It was so much calmer and quieter. I loved it. We come here every year. I told them I wanted to show you the fireworks too. 
I slip her hand in mine and give it a slight squeeze. For a moment, we fall into a comfortable silence. We can hear the crowd from the distance animated and cheering for the new year to begin. After a moment, Kaori glances at me again. I'm really glad you came with me to visit my family for Christmas. It means a lot to me. Me too. No, really. This year has been one of the best years of my life, because... And she hesitates, struggling for the words. Her face steadily flushes red. This year, I got to meet you. Ah, uh, what should I choose? Just wait until next year? What does that mean? I'm glad I met you too. I smile and nod. I'm glad I met you too, Kaori. I can't imagine being with anyone else. Me neither. He beams at me before turning away, fiddling with a piece of red hair. Suddenly, there is a loud explosion, followed by a burst of gold. We look up at the sky. Fireworks bloom in and out of the darkness. The cheering of the crowd reaches a crescendo. I glance at Kaori, but she's not looking at me anymore. She's looking at the fireworks bursting off into the sky. The colors burst across her face and turns her into a creature of light. There is so much more to Kaori than what everyone else sees. She pushes me hard to do better and keeps me accountable to the team. I remember when she first shared her bento with me and how I learned you could still be a good cook even if it's healthy food. I remember the first time I saw her face light up when she was with her daycare kids and how gentle and patient she was with them. And I remember that night we shared in the glass igloo, cuddled beneath the blankets, bearing our souls to each other. As I look at her, glowing beneath the stars, I feel as if she has never looked more beautiful. My insight starts to squirm. The promise ring feels heavy in my pocket. It's now or never. Now, let's go. I take a deep breath. Hey, Kaori? Mm. And she turns to face me. I dig into my pocket and pull out the promise ring. It glints in the light of the fireworks. Kaori's eyes widen. She takes in a sharp breath. My heart pounds in my ears. I didn't prepare anything fancy to say, but suddenly all of my feelings for her come pouring out at once. Things between us have been really great. Ever since you came into my life, you've made things so much brighter and fuller. I'm so glad I get to be with someone I share my passions with. I'm so glad I ha get to have you by my side. She gives me a curious look, uncertain of what I'm doing. This is a promise ring. I know that we've only been together for a short time. And I know that what I'm doing is crazy. But it's because I'm absolutely head over heels crazy for you, Kaori. I take her hand in mine and slip the ring onto her finger. She watches me, stunned, speechless. I want you to have this so you know that I'm serious about us. I know we're young and it's too early to think about engagement and all of that stuff. So this is a promise for me to you, that I will be the best boyfriend I can possibly be. She doesn't say anything for a moment. Her eyes are white and teary, completely focused on the ring. Panic spikes in my chest. Kaori? Again, she doesn't say anything. Maybe this was a bad idea after all. What was I thinking? Just going in full force without even asking her how she felt about us. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't ask if you were okay with this and I was just acting like my dumb self. That seems to snap her out of her thoughts. She hits me in the chest, but there is no force behind it. And she lets out a wet laugh. Of course I'm okay with it, idiot! She laughs again, this time more stunned and happy. A broad grin splits my face. I scoop Kaori into my arms and spin her. My heart feels so light, like I'm walking on air. The fireworks are booming in my ears so loud, it almost feels like I'm underwater. 
Akari smiling up at me, still teary-eyed with all of those blue and violets exploding behind her. She reaches out and winds her arms around my neck, delicate as ivy. I bend down as she rises onto her toes. I hear the shouts of the people far into the distance counting down the seconds. A trail of glitter shoots high in the sky, higher than any of the others, and showers the inky darkness with an explosion of rainbows. The cheers fade into the background as Kaori kisses me, long and sweet. My heart vaults. It feels like how stars must, right before they shoot across the sky. When we pull apart, our breath is wrecked and breathless. She smiles and kisses the corner of my mouth. Happy New Year! I smile back, brushing the hair from her face. Happy New Year! We kiss again as the skies sparkle behind us. This past year has been full of ups and downs. I faced loss, but I've also gained love. Kaori's strength keeps me grounded. With her guidance and care, I know I can face anything the future throws at me. But as I stand here with her, our bodies entwined beneath the glittering boom of fireworks, I'm excited and ready to start this new year together. With Kaori. The end. <laughs>